Guys, welcome. We have been cooking this one up for a little while now. I am absolutely blessed to have Kevin and Connor turning. You know who they are already. I don't even need to do introductions. Kevin and Connor turning the tables, one of the most viral sensations in all of music YouTube here on the channel. We're going to have a long conversation and get into it all. But guys, first of all, thanks so much for joining me on the video today. Thank Sick. you for yeah. having us. That was amazing intro. That was the biggest intro we've ever had. I got, I got shivers down my spine here in that I know. intro. I just peed a little, actually. <laughs> Thanks. Man. Yeah, I actually saw from the angle that I'm at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I you know, it. I'm a professional over here. It's what we do. It's what we do. <laughs> well, thank you for having us. I know we got a time span, so it's it's late in, over in the UK. So thank you for... Yeah, look at this. We're doing, um, there's an eight-hour time difference between us, but, you know... Like I said, we're professionals. We work these things out. So yeah. <laughs> the people, um, I'd actually, before we even get into it, I've got questions to ask you guys. But before okay. we even get into it, I just wanted to let you guys know, I did a poll. This is actually a little while ago. I did a poll on my Patreon of who, of all the music creators, and in fact, any creators out there, would you like to see a collaboration or an interview with most? And I put Fantano, I put Sean C, Mallory's, everybody, and Turning the Tables. And you guys won by a fucking landslide. Oh, wow. over, over, all really? of, yeah. over, over Fantano, really. Oh, but like by a lot too. He was number two. Um, but yeah, it was it was a clear, clear big win for the boys, for the Canadian oh, wow. boys. So so there we go. So, uh, you know, we, I, we live to serve over here. So um, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Guys, right, right. Um, I want to know where it all started from. So I've got a few different angles for this question. So considering that uh, just a, what, a couple of years ago, there was no channel now pushing 400,000 subscribers, you know, millions of views a month. Mm -hmm. Where did it start? Where did the genesis, where did the idea come from? And what was the, the execution? Fill, fill me in a little bit on the backstory. I'm going to start all with Connor because he's the, he's the mind behind it also. Yeah, yeah, I, it was uh it started with my idea. Um I've always been involved in YouTube. Uh I'm not going to mention the names of my old channels, but I've done gaming <laughs> videos. I've Are they done, still out there? Uh, there's some of them still out there. Um so yeah, I've been on YouTube do, doing content for for years now uh to not having any success really other than maybe a couple channels that got over, you know, a few thousand subscribers, but um I've always been into reaction videos. Uh, I absolutely love reactions to to music. I even at one point, you know, I was into watching reactions of like people watching TV shows and scenes, big epic scenes from TV shows. I'd watch those reactions. So it's something I was always into. Um, and one thing that kind of bothered me with a lot of the reaction channels, uh, not all of them, but some of them was just how over the top they were you know they were very uh just a little too i don't know intense for me i like stuff calm i'm a very calm guy i like to keep things chill um and there's nothing wrong with with channels that, are, that go over the top and have these you know crazy reactions because that, if that's your real reaction you know there's nothing wrong with that uh, um but i love you know stuff that's very calm and chill and uh i wanted to kind of jump into the reaction content uh but i've reacted to or not reacted i've listened to almost all the albums that would people people would be interested in uh and my dad is a musician who you kind of stopped listening to music new music after a certain point would I you really say i did you know I, right when sort of when you were born really it, it, it changed a lot like i was working long hours uh, you know, two kids, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was, I sort of put, and I put my whole musical career, John on hold and just worked the day job, the nine to five and the long hours and stuff. And I really fell out of love for music. I really sadly did. And, and, and just listened to the same things over and over again. Just like, you know, Connor can attest, like I just have the same albums on and it just was on and on and it never ventured out. Outside um, of your comfort outside zone. of my comfort zone. I think which that's, was, that's so common though, because I mean, if you, if you guys don't know, watching, I believe, Connie, you're 20, 21, is that right? 22. 22, no. sorry. And Kevin, no. you, I mean, I'm just going to reveal your ages just outrageously here, <laughs> but you're 50, right? Oh, God, you, 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 I'm 71. Yeah, wow, he's... you're looking good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that once. Always over-exaggerate your age when you say, mm -hmm. you know, you go to a restaurant or something, you say, how old are you? I'm 75. And then you're like, oh, my God, you look great. Yeah. You yeah. look great for 75. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Yeah, I've got to start yeah. doing that. I'm 48. But, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, I, I mean, I found I'm 40 next month and I found that almost everybody my age or around my age kind of stopped listening to your new music around their late 20s. For me, it was like pretty much like you had my first kid, too busy, sleepless nights, chaos. The yeah. thought of new music just didn't exist to me, really. That's, and it was only yeah. through YouTube that I just suddenly got back in touch with it. And I think a lot of our audiences are not quite at that age yet. And they think that that won't happen to them. But for most people, it actually will. So yeah, yeah just just go back to it. But it's super common. Yeah. And you know, one thing that uh, right at the beginning when people were uh, commenting, and I was getting a bit hurt by it, honestly, because it was some of the comments were like, oh, this, your dad's can't be true. Like he he, he has people to. People thought we were faking it when we did the radio. We started with Radiohead and people were like, there's no way your dad hasn't listened to Being Radiohead. a musician. But I just, you know what? I, I've said to Connor too, at Radiohead at that time, and I had the ki- I had kids going on, and, and 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 there was a younger generation of my friends and family and that were that were listening to Radiohead that were y- a lot younger than that, and I felt a little bit alienated to like if they did show me a song because the Radiohead has has a group, you know, what I mean, a, a a a fan base that's very, you know, they're really into it and they're hardcore, right? Mm-hmm. I, just, I just felt it was, you know, what I mean, I just felt it was. Um, it just, I couldn't crack it because it was just, I was so hard. I was the one, four, five ACDC, you know, I got a list here. Black Sabbath, Queen, uh, Elton John, Pink Floyd, U2, Led Zeppelin, that type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was like when the different time signatures and stuff, and then some of the memes that they had on their shirts, I just felt like, oh, I'm, I, maybe I'm just not too intellectual, you know. So I, to listen, to, Radiohead. To, listen to Radiohead. Yeah, because I just didn't get it. So I never ventured into it at that time. And I just stayed with the middle of the road, you know. I'm drinking beer. I'm banging hoos. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> very simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> beer and cigarettes, rock and roll. Um, but yeah, so so back to, to how it all started. Um, I wanted to do some type of reaction channel uh because like i said i love reaction channels and then i also really wanted something that was uh very calm and long form uh because a lot of reaction channels you know the videos would be pretty short you know like five minutes someone will do a song reaction it's really quick and uh and they talk about it i wanted something more laid back and, and long form you know sitting listening to the whole album um drinking tea or drinking you know coffee and sitting down and just having a having a chat kind of like you know two buddies just sitting down listening to a record like you would have done when you were you know younger yeah um so i wanted to encapture that in in video form so i got you to sit down one day to uh i wanted to show you my favorite radiohead record uh a moon-shaped pool and you didn't really want to do it for a while right you were no, I was I was quite hesitant, and I'm gonna you know, go. I'm gonna go back to this a little bit before, like COVID. I had left my job of 24 years uh, working in the in the restaurant industry, in, industry right? Built, building restaurants and stuff like that. And American company bought. Long story, I'll make it quick. American company bought us out, and then it was just time to leave. And Connor's mm-hmm. mom said, "You know what?" She goes, "You're just you're stressed out. I drinking at lunch. You know what I mean? Going for the business lunches, drinking, having beers there." And then too uh, much alcohol, too much alcohol. Yeah, really. It was just excessive. And then, and just trying to, you know, trying to quell off that, uh, not feeling good and where you are in life. Right. Um, started a band. We started recording. We played one show. Uh, it was going great. COVID hit. Like literally we right. played the show, I think February you came. Yeah. And then COVID came around. And COVID came around. And then we had two years of not playing any music in that two years. I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, uh, which is um, it's it's a enteropathic arthritis, which is really messes up my tendons, and it really took a big chunk of me uh, mentally because uh, I'm very physical. I run all the time, I do push ups and stuff like that, and it, it just it took a lot out of me. And when Connor had asked me, I was at the height of like feeling like dog shit. Like mentally, I didn't know what I was going to do in life. Um, wasn't really didn't have a goal, you know what I mean? I, and and the the band thing wasn't working wasn't feeling good, couldn't do physical jobs. So I thought maybe I'll do landscaping stuffing, but the entropathic arthritis was just killing me. And I was on a, a drug called methotrexate, which just sort of nulls out your immune system. And with right. COVID going around, you didn't really want to go out and do I stuff. I didn't want to go out and do stuff. And okay. and kudos to him and his sister just for, I, I love them for this, but they literally took it, you know, they took it so seriously that, they, you know, they were go- they didn't see friends. Yeah, because they didn't want to come back and, and, and get you sick, get kill me, right? If you know, because my immune system was gone, John, at that mm. point, right? So Connor had come out. I, I 
four times he had asked me and I was like, no, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then suddenly it was a sunny night and I didn't feel too bad. And we had these two lawn chairs out there that were absolute dog shit. And he said, come out there. And it was sunny. And I think that would have, that's the perfect album that to start, to start because it was Moonshade Pool was so mellow and, and just full of just, just this beautiful symphonic things. And just you and I sitting out in the sun and that really in the warm sun. And I felt good. And um, we had the one microphone passing it back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I only had one at the time, and we had a really shitty camera. Um, but Connor said you weren't even going to put it up, were you? Well, no. I was. What I wanted to do was after we filmed the video, I I liked it, and it was this wasn't really you know I say I I wanted to get into the reaction you know genre on YouTube, but it was more when I thought of this idea of showing you, uh, I wanted to have it up on YouTube, not to gain followers or subscribers but it was more to look back at you know like i could look back in 20 years and say hey this is when i sat down with my dad we listened to radiohead for the first time because you were you were seeing my death like no not (laughs) not like that um but um it was more of like you you got me making a very serious face there when you said that i was like jesus i didn't realize it was that bad but all right no no (laughs) it was uh it was more of like I mean, I guess in 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 a way, yes, but it wasn't yeah. not ex- no, I wasn't expecting you to die in like a week or anything. But it was like yeah. more like you know, life goes on, and I I want to you know share the music I love with you, yeah, and you know have it somewhere so I can you know access it, access it, and watch yeah. it. I mean, it's like anything you look we look back at videos of old family members, uh, you know, and then you look back and you're like, it gives you that sad but happy feeling and and whatnot um and i was like this would be a a cool experience with us both loving music and we could experience it together and i'll post it on youtube just so it's up there so i don't lose it yeah um not expecting it to get views because i didn't put tags i didn't put i didn't share it anywhere i just posted it and uh, i remember being at work and i went to go uh watch it or check it and it had like a hundred views and i was i didn't like the video because of the audio the quality the sun and, and everything the sun yeah. and the camera and it wasn't good quality but i saw it had 130 views and i was really pissed off because my first assumption was you posted this on facebook and you yeah, he- showed all your rel- all the relatives in the family and i was like why would you do that so i was angry <laughs> and i called you and i was like what the fuck why did you post this on facebook and you're like i didn't do anything um, yeah. I haven't posted it. I haven't shared it. And then I started reading and there, there was comments from, you know, strangers. Yeah. Um, and then people were saying he should do uh okay computer next if he hasn't heard that. And I was like, oh, these are actual people that are watching it. It's not, you know, like just some old people on Facebook yeah, that I knew from work friends. or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I was like, oh, okay, well, I was planning on doing this again, but maybe we'll do it again and I'll try to improve it a little bit because people actually are watching it. So that's why we went and bought another mic. Um, and then, yeah, we filmed OK Computer and that got even more views and more people were asking us to do it. Uh, so then we continued with Radiohead and that's kind of how it started. Um, so it was almost like... Uh, I don't know. I wasn't intending, like, I still look at the channel and I'm blown away because it this is not what I expected. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be this successful. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also want to say, I mean, I get a lot of uh, messages about other, uh, all the time I get messages from people saying, hey, there's this channel that's doing the same concept as you. They're, they've got their dad and they're sitting down with an album in front of them. Uh, they're copying you. Um, but I just want to clarify, and I think I've clarified this before on the streams, this, the dad reacts thing is, is not my idea. I didn't come up with this. Uh, I originally got inspired by a channel, uh, called cuff boys. Um, mm-hmm. do you know cuff boys? Oh yeah. Yeah. Shout, um, I don't Cam. actually know his real name, but yeah, with his mum. Yeah. Yeah. Cam, yeah. Uh, Cam he, of course. Yeah. Yeah. He did a reaction long time ago to, uh, to bones. Uh, with his mom, I think it was in 2014. And I remember watching that and I was like, this is hilarious. And uh, that's kind of where I got inspired. So I didn't come up with this idea. It's not this groundbreaking thing. So when people message me and say, hey, people are copying you, they're not 
it's just a genre of of reactions. It's not, you know, yeah, something that's that- that's just YouTube, isn't it? People see exactly, something successful, yeah. they're inspired, they want to try and do it themselves, and then it becomes down to the people and the content. And I'm sure there's a bunch of Dad Reacts channels that are also on YouTube that we haven't seen because they're shit. Mm. Whereas the ones that we have seen after you, you know, they're, yeah. they're connecting I, as well. So, yeah. yeah. I think, I, sorry, I just wanted to say though, John, it's like I can't, I, I, I'll give Connor credit on this uh, a million times, but I want to just say that he couldn't have. I think that I think the stars aligned for me personally. I don't know for you. Maybe it was at the time I needed this. Like, mm-hmm. like I really, I didn't know what I needed. But when him calling me out there, and then with my physical ailments and my mental state of like, what am I going to do at fifty? And where do you go? And you know, the, these guys are getting grown. They got their own lives and stuff like that. Um, it really, really, um, it really moved me, man. And it it gets me up every morning. I'm answering people on Patreon. I for the first two months I was answering everybody on YouTube. YouTube and Connor's every, like, you every. can't keep up. You kind of you're gonna burn yourself out. But I was like, the power it gave me, even if I was I was feeling physically fucked up, I was just like, I'm answering these people. They're they're watching, they're asking questions, they're sending, they're sending letters, beautiful you know, messages, beautiful messages, which I I print them out and I put them in the yeah, office. So some of your favorite ones you print them out. And- some of my favorite ones I print them out. There's a lot of ones that uh uh, viewers have lost their father during the COVID and stuff like that, and and family members, and it really hits home when they write mm. these letters. And I can't. I've, I've cried to one of the letters you showed me. It was, uh, you know, I won't go into detail about the letter because I don't think the the yeah. person who sent it yeah. wants me to. But um, I've even been, you know, moved by some of these messages. They're just so impactful, and uh, and like you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I have right? it. Yeah, it's over there. It's, um, but you know, my wife said we were in the car one day and she goes, you know, Connor's done something for you. That's so cool because I love people and I love relationships. I'm a hugger. You know, I just, I like people. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I love music. And so I was playing music and I stopped playing music and I was, I, and, and I had the sales component where I was in sales and I was talking to people and I really, you know, really loved being with people. And then these two worlds collided. Mm-hmm. Right with 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 what Connor created, uh, he's come on out and do this, and I didn't know that I'd be. I'm happy every day now. I I really am. I, I I'm really happy and super grateful. And I fell in love with music again so much. And I realized just before we went on air here, I was upstairs, and I was thinking, I was I was so out of touch with so many different elements of of culture due to just staying in this little box that I had. Mm-hmm. Like I feel I feel 30, say I'm saying I'll say <laughs> 30. I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go 20, but I feel about 30 in my 30s now because I know Kendrick and I know all the just all these artists and which and yeah. it's not even like you just know of Kendrick. Like you know like if someone out if you were gonna get in a conversation with someone you could say yeah I like to pimp a butterfly but good kid mad city has the production that is more modern and you could like go into detail yeah about yeah this stuff. I, mean, I would have never never ever gone to that area without uh without Connor creating this so I always send my love to him for for doing that right even though he just wanted this for a, a death video when I'm <laughs> <laughs> no I I'm for me it was it was very similar with the the stars aligning I mean I was going through a tough time mentally as well I was at a job that I I wasn't too happy well I liked the job but it was not something I wanted to be doing because I I've never I didn't go to post secondary school university or anything I just went straight to work after high school um and barely graduated high school. And uh, at the time, I, I just got out of a three year long relationship, like a month before we started the channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mental health was not great. And uh, same thing when, you know, it started these messages from people and, and the comments and, and DMs were really keeping me going and giving mm-hmm. me motivation mm-hmm. to, like, you know, I was, I was like, wow, there's people around the world that are. Ch- you know, being moved by these videos because people would say a lot of the time, like, hey, you know, I, my father, I lost my father or um, my father doesn't, you know, like music and I mm-hmm. I can almost live through what you guys do. And, mm-hmm. and those were the comments that kept me, you know. And also motivated. when you brought up, when you when we both started talking about mental health issues that we've had over the years and people, um, people started sending messages about that, it's like, you know what, they didn't read, like, 
hearing someone else say what I, you know, going through derealization and, and not be, really being here sometimes and, and uh, waking up super shaky and all that kind of stuff. And people resonated with that. And that was, it was neat to see all these people coming in. And then the discord was created with a mental health tab in there and everybody was talking in there and sharing the story. So it was helping each other, helping out. each other out. So it was, it was, it was a real cool thing. Right. So it's just absolutely beautiful to be honest. I mean, yeah, what, what, a, what a touching story. And listen, I come in, I first saw your channel. In fact, I'd spoken to Connor a bit on DMs a while mm. ago when the channel was smaller, but I think I'd already seen a video at that point. My memory's hazy, probably mm -hmm. to do with this. But um, <laughs> I think I, one of your videos that had started to to really make waves. And yeah, was within a dark twisted fantasy. Yeah, video I think I think one. it was. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, like to be real, I've never spoken about this on camera, but you know, might as well. This is the time to do it. Um, like I grew up with a with a stepfather from age zero to nineteen. I thought he was my real father, and he wasn't a great father. Well, I've done a spoiler there. Um, I thought, uh, yeah, basically, he wasn't a great father. He was okay for a bit, and then when I got to the teens, uh, the marriage between him and my mother kind of like dissolved, and he wasn't really there, and it all got very toxic. And then he left when I was seventeen, just before I moved out of uh, home. And then when I was 19, he was there in the house when I'd come back from, from summer for university. There was a big argument, classic family argument. He and I actually got into a physical altercation, oh, wow. um, shoved him over, like basically kicked him out of the house and then broke down after this. And then my mum told me at that moment that the whole time I'd been alive, he's not actually my real dad. I thought he was my real, I thought he was my father the whole time. Oh, wow. And oh, well, well. yeah, he's he, he's not. And I've literally, that was when I was 19. I've not spoken to him ever since. So I've never met my real father. And for some reason, there was this like bizarre lie was my entire life. So I have, mm. because of that, understandably, some quite deep father issues. And it's only when I had my own children at 28, well, yeah, nearly 29 myself, when I had my first kid, that they really started to, to come in because that was when I couldn't understand why they could ever have done it because I couldn't imagine doing that to my own children. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. then see, yeah. taking it back to seeing the connection between you, Kevin and Connor um, on that first video was, it, it was just extremely impactful for me. And as I was watching just that relationship between you two and just the, you know, the, the, the wonderful chemistry that you had, which is, you know, a, a huge part of your channel anyway, but also just the fact that the, such a thing could exist and you had such an open mind, Kev, to, to actually listen to to what your son was saying as somebody who grew up with a father who would have never have uh or stepfather who would have never have listened to anything like that and i thought well this mm. isn't just going to be me and there's people with you know more, way more severe father issues or like you say have lost fathers that they were close to and i think there's a whole generation of like fatherless sons really and fatherless boys out there um who've grown up with you know in single parent households and i think a lot of people were going to get something very special and magical from your channel that was beyond just entertainment, beyond just the, the reaction genre, which I was doing and other people were doing. It was like something that was completely unique as well. And obviously that's gone and spawned other ones, which is great as well. I think I've Beautiful. always been of the mindset, yeah, the, more, the more the merrier, especially if that's in making those, you know, those people have better relationships with their own fathers. Exactly. Cetera, yeah. Know? Exactly. And it's also making it cool. Like it's actually you guys in the other channels are making it cool to have a relationship like that with your dad as a young man, which is, you know, it's typically, you know, you kind of rebel against your parents, don't you, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, just yeah. from a personal point of view, like when I saw it, I knew you had something magical, but it also deeply, you know, it's like that is a, it was a really beautiful video to watch and it was very mm -hmm. entertaining as well. And then personally, I've also enjoyed your journey, Kev, because it was like the journey I've been on, you exactly. know, as a, yeah. Yeah, as a guy, like I said, I had my kids 29 fell out of culture um, in a similar way. Now, I was still in video games culture because that was my job. So I was in that all day, every day. So I never really lost touch with um, youth and whatever was going on in that world because it was mm -hmm. literally, that was what I was doing day to day. And I think as I started to lose touch with other things, um, I was becoming aware of it. And I was like, I kind of didn't want to be a dinosaur, but it's so quick. You lose what's going on in music so quickly. In mm -hmm. fact, in the four years that I've been doing this, I'm already seeing our audience, probably the same people, are starting to age out of some of the music that's coming through through yeah. now. Like the people who like so many of the albums that you've covered and so many of the albums that I've covered aren't really into a lot of the people who the 16 and 17 year olds now are into. Mm -hmm. So you're already seeing it. So it happens so quickly. Yeah. So um, yeah, this has been an absolute blessing for me to be able to, 
just rediscover all of this music that well not rediscover discover all of this music that I would have never discovered with the audience at, you know mm-hmm. instructing us along the way but yeah you guys the 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 magic the magic is is, is crazy and cu- couple that was before you put the first video out Connor did you mm. have the name already no or did the name come um, after because the no, name it's... fuck you for that name it is the best <laughs> Best YouTube channel name. It's it's actually unfair how good that name is. Okay, Rock Reacts I, I, was okay, but your one was that's okay, just level. The okay, there, there's a two, there's two things I want to say. First off, I want to say, John, um, uh, I want to thank you for being so open to you know helping us out or helping. Well, not I wasn't involved, but taking Connor's questions and being such an awesome guy. You know, you had the high numbers and caught we were looking connor was like oh john denton john denton right and uh and like he'd watch you and yeah i watched you before we started the channel yeah so he but so for him when he reached out to you and then you gave him pointers and stuff like that i i actually went to his mom and i go this john denton guy is a fabulous guy Mm -hmm. like dming connor and i thought you know no really no and i thank you for that because you could have been just you know ghosted him or whatever but you answered his questions and and really have been there from the start so thank you for that i do genuinely believe in especially in this space i'm always excited when somebody's actually putting the work in so many people do reach out and say i want to start a reaction channel how do i do it and i get it so much i actually don't answer those ones but connor's Mm -hmm. question was different it's like we started we're getting some traction i went you know checked out some of what we were doing and that was like, okay, yeah, you got, you're already there. I, I'd love to to give whatever advice or pointers that that I can give because it's always exciting. This I didn't know it was going to go crazy like this, and that's all on you guys. But um, it was, yeah, that you that's that's just the way I want to be. And I've dealt with plenty of people who are bigger in this space who aren't like that, who yeah. are much more closed off, and that's their prerogative. Um, mm. But it's just not the way. I, I don't. I'm, that wouldn't make me happy to be like that. It wouldn't. No. I just it I think, wouldn't I, I be think that's my character. That, I think that's something that you. Um we've we've sort of carried on because when people are we get dms on dirt from everywhere patreon or something and it's uh we'll answer them and just and i think it's yeah, that, it's I, that I connection to... with the people like they're they're that's just answering a question it's not you know what i mean we've got yeah. the time to do it if, and... if if the knowledge that i've gained from doing this as well and like like you connor i had vi- channels before thousand subscribers on a gaming channel 100 plus videos didn't really go anywhere that sort of thing learned a lot blew up um with rock reacts kind of bit of luck and timing and yeah sort of reverse engineering the system a little bit but yeah. if all of that stuff that all of those hours that we've learned everything that we learn and that learn, other stuff that you and i will know about like the copyright system in youtube that other channels don't know anything about if you yeah. can't i think if i can pass some of that knowledge on and somebody else has the chance to basically escape a life that they might not be interested in they might not be enjoying like you say you hated your job connor i mean i know i hated jobs when i was your age um mm-hmm. and then chance to potentially make something for themselves or or at the very least they're they're creating something they're doing they have a hobby that that yeah. makes them happy you know maybe they get to two thousand three thousand subscribers every video gets a few hundred views but they fucking really enjoy doing that and it's like a creative outlet for them that's Even exactly that's great, yeah. but, but if they can blow up and and turn it into a into a whole thing i'm assuming are you doing this full time now i'm assuming that you are is this what your your job yeah is yeah this is uh i i left my because you left your job uh before we even started the channel and that's you were trying to figure out what, what I've to been do doing, with yeah. life and uh i was you know for a while i was at my job that i didn't like but having the channel was what kept me going you know i'd mm-hmm. go to work and would i be like I can go home and edit and film a video and that, you know, kept, kept me happy for a long time. Uh, but then it just became the point where it was too, too much channel work to be done and spending eight hours in, in an office just yeah. wasn't working. So I had to, uh, to leave my office job and I, I did not like the work there, but I loved the people. So it was sad to leave. Um, but I mean, how can I complain? You know, I get to listen to music with my dad uh, every day and and edit. Um, but I don't want us to forget uh, the name. Yeah, I oh was yeah, gonna, I had forgotten. I, 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 didn't, I didn't forget. Okay, I had a friend. Uh, I a friend of mine is close by, and he's an artist, and uh, his name is Chris. Give a shout out to Chris. Um, I had asked him. I forget how it started, but he. I'm not joking. He started on a Friday night. And my text, John, were going blink, blink, right? Like uh, you asked him for a name, right? Yeah, he, everything under the sun. Boom! Every hour, it'd be something, 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 something. And then I think it was Sunday night at about three o'clock. We're sitting there, and then he went turning the table. And then I, I just said, to "Connor, what about turning 
What about turn- as soon as you said turning the tables, I was like, that's it. Yeah. And then I was just like, oh my God, Chris, Matt, but kudos to him, man. Like literally from Friday night, he was every uh, two o'clock in the morning, right, whatever, right? Records this or blah, 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 or listening with dad yeah. or all these different ones. Mm. And it's like, okay, no, no, not, no, we're not working, not working, not working. And then he hit turning the tables. And, and the thing with the name is that it is, it, we, we didn't, it wasn't like turning the tables. I didn't think of that way originally. It was like me giving you Elton John to listen to. I thought of it to just well, turn there's, tables. There's a diff- that's what I loved about it so much is there's so many different ways you can look at it. You can look at it as like a turntable, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. with music, which is relating, but it's, it's turning the tables in terms of, you know, me showing you music that you would have yeah. never heard. And then eventually we'll get around to probably you showing me music that, that I haven't heard on the channel. And uh, it just, it worked perfectly. It was, as soon as I heard the name, I was like, that's it. And I went and changed it. And then I put it in proper spelling, like capital, all capital T's. Yeah. And I was like, I don't like that. So then I put all lowercase and I was like, that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, no. So it's really big. Thanks to Chris, because we didn't, we, I don't know, we would have something weird right now. And, and you know what, if we ever do a, like a nonprofit thing to save animals, like I like turtles, right. We could do turning the turtles Yeah, when they, you know, when they, when they flip over and we go flip them over and right. Save turtles yeah. and stuff like that. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You, in the, 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 you can do a whole turning brand. But yeah, that name is, is it pisses me off, guys, because it's just too good. And I like I'm not even yeah, just sit there just seething every time I read it. It's like oh, turntables and like you say, but it's Connor showing his dad that fuck off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um yeah, Kevin, tell me a little bit about this. You you've been, you've been a musician for a long time. Obviously, you talked about the band that um had to stop because of COVID. But like, take me back a little bit to your kind of musical past. Okay, my musical past really started. Uh, I'm going way back here. So, yeah. um, my mom was a huge, huge uh, music fan. She she was spinning all the 45s of uh, man, Ingle Dan and John Ford Coley and Elton John and uh, Linda Rodstand and all these all these greats. Right? She'd have all the, she'd buy all the hit records. And I was young and I was listening to them all the time. Uh, fell in love with Super Um, and then I was just after Super Tramp, it was like, okay, I gotta get a, I gotta get a drum kit because I, I made a drum kit out of pots. I literally made a drum kit yeah. out of pots, and I was <laughs> doing little paradiddles and that kind of stuff. And I was, um, my family didn't have a lot of money. We grew up. I was the youngest of six boys in a pretty poor, tough area, right? So, um, I, I think I've told the chicken story before, but my mom is the sweetest and, and, you know, and she went out and she never worked a day in her life. She was a stay at home mom with six boys. My dad worked. Uh, she had to really, really stretch a dollar. Um, she was missing on Saturdays for about a couple of weeks, right? She was gone. And I think it, I was thinking about it was a month. She would take a bus somewhere, whatever. Anyways, I came home, John on a Saturday and I went into my bedroom and there was a three piece uh, fake Ludwig, uh, glitter kit in there. And my mom was sitting there. She handed me the sticks and she said, show me what you can do. I'm going to cry, but she goes, show me what you can do. She was, she had a couple beers in her already. And then, um, she went and she was frying chicken at this fucking shithole, dipping the chicken in but she restaurant, did, yeah. restaurant just to do that, to buy the kit for me. Right. Um, so I went in there and started just playing. I was playing some Beatles and, and some, um, easy lover. Um, uh, Phil Collins mm-hmm. and stuff and just started playing on the drums and, and, uh, and uh, I just, yeah, it was just a magical moment, man. And then right at then I was just like, I got to write. So, and then I started pl- writing songs, playing the drums. Uh, one of my brothers made a comment to me. He said, it's, that's not a song. Cause I was, I had, I was singing and then I was playing the drums, right. I was doing an Anderson pack. I was like, <laughs> baby's got to run and take you high. I don't take you run and throw. And then he's like, it's crazy that you knew about Anderson pack back in the, no, the I'm just- <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, he, he said it wasn't a song. Like he said, that's not a song. And I go, no, I got all the parts here in my head. Like they're here. Right. And he's mm. like, oh, no. so it actually pissed me off. So I took my bass drum pedal. I got on my BMX. I threw it in a bag and went to a place called long and McQuaid. There was a guy there named Roger. He's long past deceased. I went in there. I said, Roger, and it's a great place because they take trade-ins, right? Mm, yeah. So I bring they up, still do. They still do. I took a bass drum pedal and it was a good quality one. And I said, Hey, can I trade this in? I need a, I need a guitar. I want to write. Right. So I, I went in there, handed it to him. Sweet guy, man. Like that stuff is those people you never forget. I just love to thank him to this day. He got a, um, a replica Stratocaster red. He, he taped it into a, bo- a cardboard box. And never the, the brand was called Apple, like, like just Apple, right? Mm-hmm. It had it on the headstock. It wasn't great. 
He, I put it in my thing. He, he put a t- piece of tape around. I rode home with that. My mom's like, where'd you get that? I go, I traded the bass drum pedal. And then I sat there and I just learned and learned chords, man. There, but back then there was no YouTube. There was a thing called, um, I forget the book, but there was a, a chord book uh, that had all the chords. So I sat there and learning and learning. I was learning Brian Adams and all these different things and and just started really writing and throwing my music into there. And I, I, I went through a really tough time, about 14, 15 uh after smoking some weed and and i think it was a correlation you know of, of smoking the weed but also the stress level in the house in, in my, uh, yeah in. yeah our living our house environment and that set me off and i went into a really heavy anxiety area so derealization yeah i went into derealization which was pretty scary i don't know if you're familiar with it at all but i was not even here on this planet and um it was tough to get help back then and i really mm. was isolated and i had these pockets where i'd feel good and i would be writing and i was i think i was writing at a pretty decent level um and then i started doing some small little shows and concerts and got a decent following and um and got one song on the radio back then a song called diamond road and then just the ups and downs of life and then you start sort of self medicate with with alcohol because it sort of quells you your anxiety and you start having too many of these and and then life sort of took off uh got a job and then started playing again some more music and then that then took that big break and when you had the kids when when you had the kids and then it was just then i just didn't do music anymore and i've got guitars hanging around the house and stuff but there was a point i didn't even pick up a guitar i couldn't play a d or an f minor or anything i just wasn't just wasn't into it anymore and um, that's where i go full circle to connor um doing this because i'm just i'm playing guitar i'm playing keyboards i'm doing on, on the drums again i listen to stuff it just to me it's so cool because i hear you i'll be doing something and it's not like you're just playing guitar um playing some old you know pink floyd or some beatles covers yeah i i heard you was it yesterday or the day before uh playing electric guitar over the uh coffee coffee, coffee, coffee bean, bean instrumental yeah. off Astro World. I'm like I I would never expect my dad like if you showed told me 2 years ago that you're going to be playing <laughs> over some Travis Scott playing yeah. guitar I'd be like that's bullshit. No, he's not going to be doing that. <laughs> it was such a great track. It's an <laughs> it's F sharp minor so it's like a it's a great it's a great scale to get into and it was it was really fun, right? And he comes down, pops his head in and I'm jamming away to the song, yeah, right? And you were playing what was it uh you learned Heartless by Kanye on yeah. guitar and you're you're playing to Mac songs and stuff. It's uh Yeah, no, it's really um it's really changed my life. And I again I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I thank you guys for it, right? But that was your music. Journey. That was my music mm. music. So so full circle now, here we are. And um after listening to um the latest album that we just did, Gorillas. Gorillas, I days. tell you, that inspired me the most out of all the albums, and I'll tell you why, is because I realize now, John, I don't have to go as Kevin the artist. I can create a, a persona mm. behind the wall and 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 create characters and just and I don't have to. I always thought that I when I wrote, I had to be me and right let out my yourself. feelings, and I, I I I shied away from that. I didn't want to talk about or go to the dark deep places and, and that shit that happened. I and I thought I didn't want to do that, but if I can go and create an alter ego. And whatever we, whatever lizard boy was it or something. So you made some weird name, some weird, I can, I know, but if I, you know, you make a weird name and you go and I go in the studio and I can create, and I think fire out of the monkey's head, I'll get it right yeah. this time. That song with Dennis Hopper talking and, 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 and then the musical part of the chorus that really moved me. And Connor was shocked. He's like that, that's the one that moved you so much. And I was like, yeah, because it's storytelling and it takes me away and it painted a picture and, and it has a musical element. Has the musical elements, and I thought even even if I'm not singing on this project, I could go and have Connor. I could write out the lyrics and stuff, and have Connor talking in a part. And it just re- I realized that uh, that there is no boundaries. That you could make anything up. You could just as long as like you said you said earlier about YouTubers, you know, only getting a thousand views or two hundred views or whatever. Mm. If, if if ten people listen to one of the tracks that I create, that I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you put a track out and you call yourself Lizard Boy, that is going to get watched and listened to by millions of people. So you should definitely <laughs> do that right now. <laughs> but yeah. Why the Lizard Boy? <laughs> yeah, if yeah, if yeah. Kevin from Ten of the Tables has created a, an alter ego 
and he's cool. putting out music. Yeah, people are going to want to listen to that. You might have to you might have to deal with the consequences of that. But uh, yeah, I want to hear it for sure. <laughs> like I want to hear it tomorrow. So um, Connor, I want to know about your history with music. Um, what obviously you had, you know, your dad is a musician and you had music around the house, but like, where did you kind of fall into music and where did you fall into, I, I, basically, I, there's like a bunch of music from the last 10 years, from 2010 onwards, which mm -hmm. people are deeply, deeply connected to. And I know that from doing my own reaction journey and I've become deeply connected to a lot of mu that music myself, um, having done it on camera. Yes. And you being one of the audience members first, but somebody of a younger generation than me, like where did that start for you? What what were the records that started that for you? And uh, yeah, talk yes. me through that, 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 that. Your teens, I guess. Yeah. So so growing up, like young, you know, before I was even ten, so maybe like I'd say from six to t eleven, um, I was listening to a lot of stuff that my dad would play around the house. So you're playing uh David Gray, Keen, Coldplay, Travis, uh a lot a lot of British influence it to be honest. Like yeah. yeah. Travis Keen, David Gray, Paulo Natini, Paulo yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of I just heard that around the house. And I kind of um wasn't into music. I think it was because um it was so like it was around the house and it wasn't like I don't know. I wasn't into it. Is it because I, your dad kept listening to Keen? Because I, I think, wouldn't be into music if I was. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's because. <laughs> hey, you, thanks, John. I think it's because you kept listening to Keen and Coldplay. And then you got me into the drums and I was okay at the drums, right? You yeah. were really good, actually. No, you really. And it was, it bugged me that you stopped because you were killing. I, I taught you what song was. <clears throat> I, I, I forget. Clocks, but, Clocks. Clocks by Coldplay, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I could have been there for three hours. I wouldn't have got clocks from that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely up for playing that game some more. <laughs> um, but I think it was the the thing of like, you know, as a kid, you don't want to do like, I probably would have liked drums if I wasn't being pushed to do it. Yeah, it was like, oh, you got to do drums. You got to play. You got to play. You got to yeah. practice. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to do it. I'm, I want to fucking play, uh, Call of Duty or something like that. Yeah. It was like, but this is this is what we were talking about before, isn't it? Like, it's just you rebel against your parents, don't you? At a certain age, exactly. even 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 a small amount, I've got that starting to happen now. My boy's just 10, 11, and he's starting to, yeah, yeah, push back a little bit. And I can remember being like that myself a bit as well. So yeah, it was one of the reasons that your channel is so sweet as well because you kind of come to the <laughs> yeah. other side of that. But yeah, yeah. go on, sorry. No, yeah, I just I I wasn't into music for a bit. Um, it wasn't until maybe 2012 or 2011 um, is when I started to get into albums, and I remember uh, two distinct memories. One was when I was uh, ten. Uh, my friend showed me Kid Cudi's "The Prayer" because uh, he was into Kid Cudi when when his first mixtape came out. And I remember hearing that and and hearing the lyrics, and I was like, "Wow, I, I didn't know that rap could be like this." You know, mm -hmm. I, I I heard rap on the radio, um, but I didn't know it could it could be this. Yeah, what Cuddy was doing. So I immediately fell in love with with Kid Cuddy, and then around the same time, uh, another friend of mine, uh, two of my closest friends, and I I'm still best friends with them. Uh, he showed me uh, "Knock Knock" by Mac Miller off Kids. Uh, so these those two mixtapes were kind of started my musical journey, I would say, um, because then getting into high school, uh, I was insanely into playing Mac Miller, uh, Blue Slide Park. It was the first record I bought on iTunes. Uh, first record I bought uh, on CD was Man on the Moon. Uh, so I was playing these continuously throughout you know, my first two years of high school. Uh, and then I'd say around grade 10, uh, I started diving into some other music uh, in terms of like other rap music. So I went and I started getting into, uh, you know, Tribe Called Quest, Outkast, uh, Jay-Z, Eminem, uh, Nas. And I realized how, how deep the world of hip hop was uh you know it wasn't just kid cuddy and mac miller and then from there i don't know what changed but i kind of 
fell away from hip hop for a bit. Uh, and, or no, I, I do know what happened. I remember because I was really into YouTube. Uh, like I said, I've always been on YouTube and I was watching uh, YouTube reviewers. And I remember Fanta- seeing Fantano's channel and seeing how diverse his taste was. And I was like, that's such a cool thing. You know, I, I only listen to really hip hop mm. and, and Coldplay and Keen. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I remember being like, you know what? I'm going to go and look at some of the greatest albums of all time on like a list on Google and I'll pick out a couple and I'll, I'll go listen to them. Uh, so one of them was, was Kid A by Radiohead. And I remember listening to that and not liking it the first time. Um, but, the more I listened to it, I fell in love with it. Uh, so then I got really heavily into Radiohead, which expanded my taste into a whole bunch of other rock bands. I went back into classic rock and and psychedelic music, and uh, it just started from there, really. Uh, mm-hmm. So the two main points in my life was my friends showing me Kid Cudi and Mac Miller, and then me finding Radiohead. Uh, through the internet and then those so Kid Cudi and Mac Miller brought me into the world of hip hop and then Radiohead brought me into everything else that I listened mm. to all the other genres so That's, I had yeah. I, I had no influence in it at all I just really <laughs> yeah you I, influenced I, him to listen to some good fucking music yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, I was to say we had a studio in the house a recording studio in the house I had the drums and everything set up and everything was mic'd and ready to go but I hey, uh, I I'll, just I'll fucked up I just let play first, that, playing that fucking Keen first okay, yeah Keen I'm not too Keen on no yeah, you knew that was coming yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no Coldplay their first four records mm-hmm. yeah. solid. I absolutely love their debut and I like Viva La Vida. The, the two records in between are, are not bad. Um, so I don't yeah, think they get play. a lot of hate over here, obviously, but, yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, like, like say first record and then yeah, just, just sporadic songs that that new one with uh, BTS, I'm not keen on, but you know, no, oh, that they're, was they're horrible. Fun. It was, it was horrible. Oh, yeah, it was I, just, I didn't know how much of a fan you were, so I didn't want to go in too much. Yeah, and I'm yeah. also, I'm always a little wary of uh, awakening the army. I've never really bothered them too much, the I, BTS army, but you know, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. I, you know what? I, the BTS army, they can come at me for this. That was the worst performance I've ever seen. Remember that? I was, I was wow. embarrassed okay. for Chris Martin. I'm thinking, why did he do that? Yeah, it was actually hor- like I I've seen that was the before. universe song and we watched yeah. it on the awards. That was horrible. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't see a live performance of it. Oh, yeah. horrendous. Don't, so watch. Just, Don't yeah, watch. BTS yeah. tell me that was Connor from Turning the Tables that said that, <laughs> not me. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I, I res- I'm not a BTS fan, but I, I respect what they're doing in the music industry, and I, uh, you know, so if if the arm, yeah. if BTS Army is watching, I'm not a hater, but that song uh, and that performance specifically horrible. Yeah, and it was the combination of the two that that both shit the bed. It was yeah. it was just done wrong. I think if if they would have, I think if BTS would have sat down and Coldplay and and Chris Martin would have been on the piano and then they would have been around each other. Yeah. But the dancing and trying to do things together, it looked embarrassing. Yeah, and the audio was mixed. The audio really was bad. mixed really bad, yeah. No, it sounds no, horrendous. I, I almost want to make a video to it, but again, I don't. You I, mean, I, I will incite the wrath of a fan base if need be. I've done it a few times, especially M&Ms, but if, I, you know, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's got to be worth it. I, yeah. It's definitely I also, be worth I also it. want to clarify, because we've been talking about this like for couple minutes now i'm not a huge cold play fan i just want to set put that out there i'm not a we're not cold play stands no 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 i but, you know no i you know what i think i still think when i first heard yellow and i bought that album and now it's it's crazy because now that we talk about it but i got that album and i brought it home and i listened to it and i had it cranked i drank this think, was in 2000 yeah like 14 beer mm-hmm. and no and i was just like sonically i who are these guys man it was just like that whole album was brilliant to me right yeah. it was like hearing white ladder for the first time like with david gray and being at the because john i really come from the songwriter the james taylor type of things like acoustic guitar you, you need to have a conversation with my, with my mom that's who i grew up listening to in the house james taylor yeah. is my mom's favorite artist yeah ever, same i think with- yeah, like I, I grew up listening to James Taylor with my mom. So it was Jim Croce and James Taylor and Harry Chapman, these great songwriters. So I've sort of went to, you know, Keen, Travis, David Gray, uh, you know, Paulo Natini, and there's many, mm-hmm. many more that I gravitated yeah. towards. But when I heard that album, I'm like, these guys, I, I even said it, remember? These Not guys were me. No, I didn't say it. I said it to a friend of mine. I said, these guys are going to be, they only had yellow on the, 
on the radio. I listened to the whole album. I said, these guys will be the biggest band in the world at some point. They will be. And then we went to saw, we saw them at uh, BC play stadium, 80,000 people. And it was, yeah. it was crazy. And it, they with the reason being is they had a stadium sound. They had that, they had, they had that big, that big sound already happening, right? That yeah. wide open. And they're meant for stadiums. They are. Yeah. So it's funny when they came out over here, I like, I was 17. So I was in my final year of school and that album dropped just as like I was finishing my exam. So it was like the sound of transitioning from a, from a young man into adult life. And I was going to be leaving where I grew up. So it just like, it kind of like soundtrack that. So it's quite, quite meaningful for me. Then I spent my whole twenties with people coming up to me saying that I look like Chris Martin. So then I started <laughs> to hate Coldplay ever since. I've since put on weight, so I don't really look like him so much anymore. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, what was interesting back then in the UK is there was a bunch of bands that were coming out and people were going, oh, they're like Radiohead sounding bands. Mm -hmm. And that was like a big sort of genre. And the two most famous of those were, mm -hmm. um, were Coldplay and Muse. Uh, Muse is a bit more obvious, I think, especially their early work. Yes. But um, yeah, there was like Radiohead's, are, you know, it's funny to that Radiohead had such like, not musically, because the music is obviously incredible and intricate and complicated and so influential. But like Radiohead, when they first came out over here in the UK when I was a teenager, they're around a similar sort of time to Oasis and Blur, and they were what the nerds listen like the Radiohead fans then were the most annoying people. And they probably still are, and then shout are. out to Radiohead fans. But like <laughs> yeah. back when I was a teenager, it's like I was I was a nerd. I wasn't I wasn't cool, but like the Radiohead fans were like, oh, don't you know, they don't even wash, man. We can't even, I don't no. even want to speak to those guys. So I had this like, <laughs> I, I had this like, um, it took me a long time to actually get into even Radiohead's like bigger, you know, more accessible hits from sort of pre-kid A times because of that, because of like, you know, being 14 and stuff like that really meaning, you know, how cool something is actually matters when you're 14 years old, much yeah. more so than when you're 40. But um, yeah, I'm off on multiple tangents, but yeah, I fuck with that first Coldplay record. But yeah, BTS Army, um, Don't yeah, Kill Me, yeah. I think is, is, no, is but, where I'm uh, getting to. Speaking of Radiohead, that's funny that you you mentioned that um, because just yesterday in my in our Discord, I, I tend to go in there and just chat with people randomly. And uh, I, I mentioned that my girlfriend is out in Montreal uh, seeing Roger Waters uh, from Pink Floyd. He was playing in Montreal. And I was like, oh, I'm jealous. And then all the people in my Discord were like, She's not real. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, you listen to Radiohead. That's you don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so like, 20, yeah. 20 years on, and it's the, it's the same jokes. I like that. 24 yeah. years on, in fact. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, also, I need to clarify that I do really like Radiohead these days. But um, yeah, it's, it's always been, it's always, they have a different, it's a different energy over here, I think, around Radiohead than it is um, globally, around I think. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think there's, yeah. Because they were just, I think it's because so many Radiohead fans were so annoying and they were like in your life all day that, yeah, it, yeah, it, it spoiled the music a bit. But you get that sometimes with bands. One question I wanted to ask you, actually, when you were talking about um, expanding your musical tastes in Canada, do you have radio stations that play lots of different genres or is it like the States where it's like rock radio, rap radio? Um, I don't know. We don't, I don't listen to the radio much, but. Mm. There's one thing that uh, we were talking about recently about how Canada specifically has to play certain Canadian songs. Yeah, right? I was going to actually ask John that. I was going to throw it to, to John as one of my questions is that in, in Canada, we have to, there's a thing called CanCon, which is Canadian content. So there has to be a, a certain percentage of Canadian content on the radio, even if it's shit. Yeah. Right? Right. So like Connor was saying, he was at work and he heard the song over and over again and listening to it and listening to it or whatever. Radio. I thought it was a huge hit. I thought it was like something that was just the top of the billboard charts because I heard it every day. And then I looked it up on YouTube and it had like 400,000 plays. And I was like, what is this? But it's because it was a Canadian artist and they were just pushing it over and over on the radio. Yeah. Well, we had, you know, that we, we don't have any hip hop stations here in Vancouver, do we? Not that I know. Because I don't, I one thing I don't do anymore at all is listen to radio. Like even in the car, I bring, a, I got an, I got an old Miller. car. So I put in a CD, I put in Mac Miller or Kanye or something now and drive around like that. Like I'm like this, the other day is 53 year old guy. And I, I had J Cole on, right. <laughs> it's like, but who, I don't, I, you know what? I, That's fucking the, cool. No, you know, at the beginning, I honestly, I said, you know, going to a concert, we me with my gray hair and, and that, and then I got such a response from people saying, fuck it. If you like the music, go Just to the go. show. Yeah. Yeah. Also, how was Jay Z? Like, Son he's the same age as you, isn't he? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
So yeah. Oh yeah, okay. no. So it was like, you know what? I'm just I'm just going to go to the shows and 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 enjoy them. So when one comes up, I'm just going to go. I'll be the guy that's got the gray hair and I'll be. Yeah, talking. I think we're we're looking about going to the Kid Cudi show. We're thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and who else is is coming this summer? Um, uh, Kendrick. Kendrick's coming. Yeah. yeah, we've got both of those in November, like six days apart. And I'm going to try and get to both of them. I haven't got tickets oh, wow. for either of them yet, but Wembley. Try. Um, no, the O2. So oh, the O2. Both of them in the O2. Yeah. Is O2 bigger than Wembley? Or Wembley's uh, O2 is bigger than Wembley uh, Arena. So the O2 Arena, yeah. I don't know what the capacity is. It's a bigger capacity arena, but obviously Wembley Stadium is 80,000, which isn't... Jeez, those, artists, uh, those artists just aren't big enough in the UK to, to do a stadium. They're big enough I, to do the O2 comfortably, and they could probably do two, three nights, but they yeah. yeah. there's only a few I, that do Coldplay, Ed Sheeran, you know, that do... I think Foo Fighters Wembley. did Wembley Foo as well. Foo Fighters, yeah. Also, yeah, saw, they, you can only really do it now because... I mean, kind of like Canada, our weather is shit. So there's not many outdoor gigs planned, really. They'll do a few in the summer. Sheeran just did a few in, in Wembley. But yeah, there's no point. You know, England rains all the time. So That's you here. have to be inside. It's, yeah. it's, it's, raining. It, it's raining today. It's raining today. We went from shorts to now it's cold and raining. And we mm. had our tits on to go for our tea this morning. So it's crazy. But um, there was something I wanted to ask you, John, if I could throw oh, you yeah, a yeah. I was really, really, we've, get, we've been getting a lot, a lot of questions about doing some UK hip hop artists. Mm -hmm. uh, one comes to mind, which I watched his Brit award performance and it was absolutely brilliant. His name was Dave. Yep. Um, I think the album they want us to listen to is psychodrama. I think, I think that was the one. Yeah, I have listened to no Dave. I don't know. Yeah, Connor, I, I might listen to all Dave and then actually get him to listen to it. So that, <laughs> yeah, that could be different. Connor mm -hmm. listened to um, little, little Sims, Sims and I loved love, that album. Yeah. And so I was just wondering, like you growing up in the UK, um, what did you follow? Like when you were growing up and you were say in your twenties and stuff like that was there was the hip hop scene, obviously. Right. Was there, was there certain artists that did you listen to American hip hop or did you, or did you just listen to rock or how did that sort of evolve? What, what I'll give, I'll give the quick, the short story rundown of my little musical history seems it might as well do it. And then it will tie into, into what you ask. So, um, yeah, with me being 40 next month, I think a lot of people think that I'm younger than I am, especially when I've got the Zoom filter that, that takes away my wrinkles. But yeah, I've been around for a minute. So um, yeah, my my original, apart from growing up in the house where my mum would play yeah, James Taylor and a lot of artists like, like him, literally loved the Eagles, still does. Um, yeah. And then my stepdad would play slightly heavier stuff. So a lot of cream, a lot of like bluesy rock. Um, also, my mum liked Sabbath and things like that, but that wasn't really played so much in the house. Beatles and things like that. So I kind of grew up listening to those sorts of sounds. And then I, the first band that I truly really got into was Nirvana in the, in the early 90s when I was like wow. 10, 11, about the age that my, my boy is now. And uh, yeah, just before Kurt killed himself. And then that just kind of like informed so, much, so many of my musical choices around then. And obviously as... Everybody knows, but people also don't really know. No streaming, no YouTube back then. You bought your music. It cost a lot of money. You only had enough money to buy one album a month, maybe. So you, yeah. you played the shit out of that album and you didn't necessarily <laughs> know all these other artists or all these other songs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then the late teens, angst, all that sort of stuff. New metal came around. So corn, Slipknot, Limp Bizkit, embarrassing. Oh, well, yeah. Um, yeah, being into that. But also the whole time had enjoyed rap that I'd heard. Not much of it made it to the UK in the 90s. Um, I think like one of Biggie's songs came over here in the 90s. Um, the song that when after Biggie passed, you know, the 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 one that's the, the police cover, I can't even remember what it's called. Oh yeah, Ever Ready to Take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That made it over here. But really like hip hop and rap didn't really come over to the UK at all until, in, in terms of like mainstream radio play, until like late 90s, early 2000s. And then, and then it started to make a little bit of waves. Oh wow. And then just after that, um, Probably about 2005, a scene burst out here in the UK called Grime. And a lot of people think Grime is all UK rap, but it's a very specific thing. And it was born out of um, UK Garage and Drum and Bass and Dub, where it's basically um, very fast uh, rap beats. It has to be 140 beats per minute and then MCs oh. rapping over that. So um, it's a very specific sound. It's a very noticeable sound. So you listen to a lot of Skepta is grime. Yeah, uh, Wiley, Wiley is all grime. Um, that guy's a controversial character, but a phenomenal MC and rapper. Kano, uh, back in the day, um, was another grime MC. And then there's a few others like Getz and a few others who have still gone on to make great music. But um, it's kind of a very specific type of music. It sounds fucking awesome. The great grime tracks. 
but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for a UK listen because it's really enjoyable, but to react to it, you're going to be, it's, it's, it's head nodding music, but yeah, in terms yeah. of breaking down lyrics and stuff like that. And that kind of um, existed and it had a whole scene around it. And there was a lot of like clashes and diss battles and stuff like that in, in around that scene. And then I had kids and just stopped listening to all sorts of music altogether. And then it's only in the last probably five years. And some people might correct me on this that the UK rap scene has started to really grow, um, where some of the artists coming out of Grime were basically rapping on slower beats. Stormzy, who came out of Grime originally, well, Stormzy, yeah. um, was probably the artist that really started to make waves. He was, I think he was one of the first artists. I think he was the first artist to have a number one album, uh, a rap album here in the UK uh, as a UK rapper. Uh, and he blended some Grime tracks on his albums with slower tracks and some like gospel rap tracks. And then the first artist to have a UK number one um, single rap uh, was Dave, a guy oh. who started getting notoriety at 16 years old for incredible lyricism, like way beyond his years lyricism. And then real like almost, uh, you know, like cinema verite, um, where they, you know, like almost the documentary filmmaking, but it's it, it's um, storytelling, like a lot of old English films, Ken Loach and stuff like that, and are born out of that tradition. This was like the the musical version of that, like very much like a lot of hip hop, American hip hop talks about life, struggle, the streets. But to have that from from an English point of view, from the point of view, Dave is um, the son of like Nigerian immigrants, which is a really common story for people in in London. And um, yeah, his story of his brother got locked up for, for first degree murder. His big brother, his dad wasn't around. So it's just this story of this boy, 16 year old boy who just was basically lost. There's all these pressures in the streets of London, much like there are in many inner cities to to go down bad paths. Friends, you know, like I said, his brother got locked up. And then that album, I won't spoil anything for you, but 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 he released a bunch of music before the album of Psychodrama, which you like, you listen to it and you're like, how was this guy 16, 17, 18, the maturity and the wit and the rhyming ability and the mm. skill that he raps with. And I had never heard him before reacting to music. We, I was encouraged to listen to him for our audience as well. But in my opinion, he's one of the best rappers in the world, American or English, and he's just getting better and better. He's still 23, I think. He's still disgustingly young. Wow, this is two albums I, in. I, but, I watched um, him on sorry on that performance. He came out and played the guitar part. He saw you know, on, on acoustic. He'd been, he'd been learning uh, the, on the Brit Awards at that point. He'd been learning guitar for a month, and he just wanted wow. to. He wanted he wanted to test himself. So yeah, he's a pianist. So a lot of his beats yeah, yeah. have he have his own piano. I'm but, excited. Um, I, I, I I would. Really, I really enjoy watching that video. If you guys reacted to, to no, psychodrama, psychodrama, well, let's do. We got to do psychodrama then. Yeah, well, I, I've always had it like in the back of my mind because I get people recommending it, but I I know nothing about Dave. I know nothing about what style or genre he was. So mm -hmm. it's kind of just been one of those albums that people keep saying, and I'm just like, yeah, maybe one day we'll get around to it. But John, you've just that whole story. You've you've convinced me. We'll do that soon. Well, at 16 years old too, man. That's like something yes. else. Just yeah, it. he's a little bit older when when, when so well, I won't spoil any more for it. So I want you to go yeah, yeah. as fresh as possible. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna really enjoy watching that one. Oh, that's, sure. that'll that'll be that's cool because it will yeah. be both of our first reactions. That's, too. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I've enjoyed when you've done that before with the newer stuff that's come out with the um, you know the weekend right. and um, yeah, Silk, Kendrick Silk, and Silk, um, Silk Sonic. I think Silk Sonic, Silk Sonic. was really fun for me because yeah. I, I went to the Value Village store and got us some really cheesy looking shirts, seventies looking. And they the were so nice, yeah. And the, and the mustache that was fun. It was just that was just some of them. You know, some sometimes when you're doing these, we're you know we're not mentally there or physically there or something like that, and some hit the mark. But you know, you you do it all the time. Sometimes it's just you got that energy and you just go and yes. then. When the magic ones happen, and I think we've in the last couple of days we've had ones where we leave and we're laughing feel very so hard, satisfied we just after. feel satisfied. Like there's ones where you go, yeah, it was okay, you know. I mean, but you know, people watch it and they enjoy it. But the ones when we when we really laugh and we're having belly laughs and and things are hitting marks, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and you know, kudos to you. Like uh, we, I could not do this by myself. There's I no couldn't way. do it by myself, and either. he couldn't do it by himself. Like we've we both talked about this, like. I couldn't just sit there and do it. I just, it's not, I need him to bounce off. I need Connor corrects me. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just when I, I don't think I could sit for that long and, and talk to a camera, you know, I like being able to chat with the audience and you. Yeah. So kudos. It's, to, it's a different you know. skill set for sure. Yeah. Cause obviously I did yeah. two years with somebody else and that's mm -hmm. why I learned so much about um, reacting to music. I was doing it with, with Simon on rock reacts the whole time. Yeah. And it had those moments where if I couldn't really think of anything to say at that moment, he'd pick up the slack. Up. 
Likewise, yeah. and then you just spark into a conversation and then those moments sort of happened. And, you know, we had good chemistry as well, which is why the channel did well. And then when that channel ended and I did go out to, to do it on my own, I'd done a couple of album reactions on my own, but yeah, just like, wow, the, the pressure to think of something to say at all times was, yeah. especially at first, really, really, really difficult. And you'll notice on my older ones, when I first started on my own, they were slightly longer videos where me trying to find something to say about every single song. And I need to ask you a question about this in a minute, Kev. I'm going to underline yeah. it because I've written it here because I don't want to miss out on that one. Um, as I've gone on to do it more and more and more and more, and more I've just taken some of the, the pressure off myself to, to get it perfect on a first listen. And I think when you're doing a new album at the same time that everybody else is listening to it, there's less pressure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's less... Yeah. We're, we're, like this is the question I was going to ask you, Kevin. Do you feel like a sense of pressure and responsibility when you're listening to? Because I'm saying because I really did. Um, you're listening to music that's so important for so many people, and I found myself like almost to the point of being overwhelmed with wanting to get it right. And it's impossible to get it right because it's the first time you're listening to it. And you know, my first listen, your ten years of listening commenter. Like we're not going to. You know, I might miss something. Yeah, we just but, did. Yeah, yeah. But like, I think we're just do you, do you feel that sense year. of responsibility? Uh, I I do I do feel pressure when I sit down because there's you know there's uh, these albums that are such highly regarded. But all I have to do from 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 my point of view is because I just have to I close my eyes and just really get into the musical component of it, be, being the musician and really feeling that. Like mm. I'm not the most articulate in talking about the lyrics and stuff. And some reactors get into the lyrics more and all that kind of stuff. And for me, it's all about the feel of the the feel of the album and how it feels and makes me feel um, emotion wise. And then, and I also read the lyrics with it. So if the lyrics come together, so I really just concentrate on doing that and being honest, like you know what I mean, and just really letting that sort of flow out. I move, I move a lot. I physically move a lot, I'm twitching because that's just that's how I just react to music, right? Mm. Well, you you weren't. Uh too keen on whole lot of red at all really uh, you i was not a fan of that album and you were vocal about it like you were just like i can't get into this and, i couldn't i still and, can't yeah and the comments were not negative people were like it's okay like yeah take some time and try to yeah. listen to it again and try to get they, into it they weren't like because a lot of people nowadays hold whole lot of red in high regard um, yeah and people some people you know rank it one of their best out al- one of the best albums that came out that year mm. um so, but the comments were were not negative. It wasn't people saying you're shitting on my favorite album. It's just yeah. like yeah, I understand. Do you know what weirdly I found about um, Carty's fans? They're mm-hmm. not insecure. They're like I think a lot of the fan bases you get really upset if you say anything negative about their favorite artist Eminem. Yeah. I think they're yeah. very insecure about a lot of different things. So they, they they can't they can't deal with somebody having a different opinion or saying everything anything slightly negative. The first Carty reaction we did back on Rock Reacts was to R.I.P. And it was like, we went a little bit overboard. Just, we didn't get it at all. And I was like, okay, I'm going to ham this up a little bit, pretending I'm asleep, slumped over the desk, this type of thing. And we got killed yeah. in the comments, but we didn't get killed in the comments because we didn't like it. We got killed in the comments because they said we're being disrespectful because every other artist that you've listened to, you've given them the time of day and you just acted like this. And I was like, do you know what? You, you, you've called me there. You've called me out there because that is what I was doing. I was trying to do it for content wise. And like, yeah. you've not got pissy about it. You've actually just called me in like a way more mature way, even though you're probably 15. In a way yeah. more mature way than I acted. And I was yeah. like, I'll give the guy another chance. I listened to another track. I'm like, oh, there's something there that I like. And then I got drunk and listened to the other ones and it works more and way better when you're pissed. Yeah, you've got to be on something, I think, to listen to his music and Is enjoy that one it. still out there? His drunk reaction? Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got three. Yeah, three drunken oh. reactions to all three Carty's albums. Yeah. Yeah, See, I have to shy away because there's now I go back and I watch your reactions that we've done, right? Yes. Which, is, which is fantastic. I'm like, oh, we've done that. John's done that. Okay, now I can go watch him, right? Yeah. So I'll have to go back and watch. Yeah, some- I think Die Lit is the most drunk of the three, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> the couple, a couple were like mildly tipsy, but that one was, I've been drinking in here for like six hours, playing some video games, drank way too much. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to fucking do Die Lit. And <laughs> yeah, that's got like hundreds of thousands of views now. So, yeah. yeah so you can't watch the Die Lit one yet because we haven't done that. No, no you no, can no. watch this whole lot of red. You watch yeah. WLR, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. I can watch that one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, go ahead, um, so- yeah, I was just wondering, like, obviously we're talking about, we've seen you guys do um, some newer stuff. Uh, I, I did wonder when you first started the channel whether you would react to stuff that was coming out like day and date that made sense. Obviously, with a lot of artists that they're dro- dropping something, but you've not done the back catalogue yet. You're kind of like 
stuck a little bit in some cases, but yes. as you do more and more and more, that's going to be less of the case. Like, what are you, do you have plans for the future? Obviously you've done some vlogs as well on the second channel, which you've done. Uh, I've really enjoyed those actually. They've done some solid numbers as well in terms of views. So yeah, what, what, what are we looking at for the next six to 12 months on, on the yes. triple T? So we, <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, <laughs> we've dabbled in some stuff, um, in terms of like trying to experiment with different things, different concepts. So we've tried some vlogs. We've, we had a podcast. We did two episodes just tried out. Um, we had another series on the channel where we were doing like a summary of the albums that, we which was quite popular. Yeah. So, so people pe liked it. Um, I think we got to a point where I was like, okay, we need to really just for now focus on doing these album reactions consistently because there was points where we were like falling behind and we wouldn't upload for 12 days. And, uh, you know, I, so right now the plan is, you know, get through, a, get on a consistent schedule of album reactions, uh, have the episodes out, you know, consistently. And then I think when things are more, settled down and we're on a very consistent schedule i do want to dabble into more vlog content um because i had fun doing the vlogs um the problem with the vlogs was we started them and then me personally i don't I, you seem i don't know maybe you felt the same but i wasn't feeling the best mentally um for a period of time uh with just my anxiety and my mental health and to do an album reaction when you're not feeling good is not the worst. Like you just sit down, but to go out and vlog and be entertaining and try to do stuff, it's really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we kind of had to put the vlogs, you know, to the side for now. But uh, I think when things, you know, settle down uh, and we've got a good schedule and our mental health is, you know, doing well and stable, uh, I want to get back into you know, vlogs. Uh, and I don't know how you feel about that. No, I'd love to get into them too. And, and, you know, one of the, one of the things I'd like to do, and once I get over this, uh, this, 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 my airplane issue, um, and I, and, and, and you know what, I'm, I'm, we're talking about airplanes here for a second, but the, the, the half a Xanax on Drake on, on sickle mode. And yeah, people are saying that, you know, I didn't mean to diss him because he, he gets sleeps for 13 hours after a, uh, <laughs> Half, half a Zan, a, half a Zan, yeah. Because I was like, "Oh my God, it takes me six to sleep that long," <laughs> right? So uh, I didn't didn't mean to do that. But once I, I think I'd like to um, get over your fear of flying. Get, get yeah, get in the plane and actually, and, and Con Connor and I go do do something to maybe you know I, this is a big one for me, John. If I could do this, but I'd like to. I'd love my dream is to go to Glastonbury. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get over there, bring the camera, you know, just just enjoy the show, watch some bands. I mean, that would be. For me, a pub, uh, a couple of pints in a in a pub over in England. Go watch mm -hmm. Glastonbury, see some, you know, just experience yeah. that kind of stuff, and then vlog it would be like a big highlight for me, man. The turning the tables, JD link up at Glastonbury. I think that that needs oh, to happen. Yeah. I've never been either. Really? Even though, yeah. even though it's only down the road, yeah, I've never been. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay, that's not bad then, because yeah. then I, I, I figure that everybody in the UK goes to Glastonbury. No, because it sells out like that. But I think if we use our collective clout, uh, especially if we have another year of being on YouTube, maybe we can get in, yeah, around the side backstage yeah. with a little. Yeah. We, we can get a media pass, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, no, I don't want to interview anybody. I just want like the the famous person pass, so we yeah. can just hang out. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't have to work for anyone. <laughs> I, yeah. I never want to work for anyone ever again if I can possibly help it. But yeah, that's interesting. I'll be interested to know like what you guys um, do. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of albums to come. I'm not going to add to your pile of incessant requests for reactions because I yeah. know how that feels. So yeah. I will just sit patiently and look forward to to what's coming in terms of um, the albums you have coming up. You mentioned that you might be like switching it. Like, uh, is there any plans to do? Kev, you you know you get Go Connor to listen to an album, yeah. Well, I'm going to answer that question. Is that like what Connor spoke about earlier about his musical progression? He's he's listened to so much music that it really makes it difficult for me to to play a classic album. And and if I'm going to do if I'm going to go back and do Sabbath, Queen, Elton John, Pink Floyd, U2, uh, Zeppelin, I could get away with like the one Who album probably that you haven't heard. Yeah, I haven't listened to the Who um, really. But Connor's listens to so much, like uh, Brian Ferry. I mean, all the stuff that mm. I've listened to growing up. He's heard a good chunk of it. We went to Roger Waters, the Animals tour a couple, two years ago, three yeah. years ago, and he knew every song. 
Right, like yeah. Mama yeah. Yeah. He's a so huge I don't know if it would even resonate because of the the audience wouldn't know that music either. So you'd almost have to do like a, a different channel entirely to connect to a completely different audience who are more, yeah, yeah the age range, the, you know, exactly, the older yeah. age range. Yeah. And it might work, but it's a lot of work and it might not. Yeah, I was, I was always wondering, because it's an obvious one, isn't it? It's like a... a it's an we obvious get that one. Com- yeah. We get the comment it, it, every, it, every video. Yeah. Every yeah. Video, there's a top comment. Hey, you, your dad should show you an album. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's yeah. a little complicated. It's true. I could, you know what? I could, we could just totally do different. Like I could show you like some of the art, the hardcore, weird, weird like porn that I grew up on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <Yeah. laughs> Wait, do you, do you mean the soundtrack or like just actually the porn? No, no, the soundtracks. The yeah. soundtracks. The, okay. the, sing, the single saxophone. <laughs> And the the wah guitar, the wah guitar, yeah. and the guy's like, "Hey, long pizza, salami pizza." Yeah, like no. delivery guy. We could do that. Um, I don't know. Salami, if salami pizza is a good um, like alter ego name, actually, Kevin. If you're thinking <laughs> hey, of another right one. There. You know what? Yeah, forget Lizard Boy. <laughs> yeah, salami pizza. <laughs> salami pizza. I don't know what kind of music this is going to be. By the way. Dude, we're all here for it. It sounds like it's going to be seventies porn music, so I think we're all yeah. here for that. Definitely, <laughs> that's all it is. Seventies porn music. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, back to to what the channel, you know, the future is going to look like. Uh, I, I want to expand it. You know, I want to do more than just reactions because mm. uh, I've always, like I said, I was telling you earlier. You know, I've had multiple channels and I've done lots of stuff on YouTube um, that didn't have. So what, what else are you interested in? Because I think that's one thing that we get stuck in as YouTubers, especially if we do a subject like we do, that people, they're always surprised. People go, oh, you like football? And I'm like, yeah, man, like probably more than music and for longer. Yeah. And it's, you know, but they just only know if they know. They didn't catch that video. They didn't catch that stream where I mentioned it. They didn't see that tweet or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what else, what else are you guys kind of into? Well, well me personally, I, I'm into... Uh... Like if, you know, going to make different content, uh, I'd love to do, well, one, the vlogs stuff outside, uh, you know, leaving the house and, and doing doing things with friends and, and exploring the city and de- traveling and whatnot. Um, also really into like commentary type videos, you know, where it's not music related, but just chatting about subjects. And, and I, I like... Uh, I really like comedy stuff, uh, whether it's comedy sketches com- like or implementing comedy sketches and skits into a commentary video. Like I love that genre on YouTube. Uh, that's definitely something I want to dive into. I'm also a huge hockey fan, but I don't think I'd ever do anything on YouTube relating mm-hmm. to hockey. But that's another thing. Like you said, I there's a channel I watch on YouTube that covers hockey. And sometimes I'll leave a comment like talking about a trade or a, a game. And people will be like, what the hell are you doing here? It's always the same. What are you doing here? It's like same, yeah. same it's desktop, nice. same, same yeah. YouTube as you, mate. Yeah. Like, oh, I also watch YouTube, of course. Yeah. No, but yeah, it was that one. Yeah, it's good. I like doing that though sometimes though, because you get I get a little bit of an ego boost when you yeah. <laughs> suddenly you're the top comment and everybody's and everybody's underneath it. Yeah. But you, um, you have uh stuff that you've always wanted to do YouTube wise and yeah, you know, I've I've I I I have a history, John, of streaming. I started streaming um before Twitch. You're before what, Twitch. I was that. on I was on Justin TV when it when it first no came way. Out. Yeah, I was now this very- I did not know. I was one of the very first and I'd do a two and a half hour stream and people would put up lyrics and I would improvise, improvise and uh, play guitar, improvise. I'd also cooked at the same time. And that was a lot. And that was the thing. The element that I really liked was that interacting, it, interacting but I was live. And so I'm on the spot. There's no, I, I have to make shit up. That's funny. I have to do, you know, lyrics that are funny and make, and make up these crazy songs and entertain people because there was no cut and paste. And I always found that YouTube, I was like, ah, oh, I looked down on YouTube because I'm like, these people just cut out the funny parts and you know what I mean? They're not really entertaining mm. for two hours. Right. Until I realized that, you know, we can, you, Connor was started editing stuff. And then like, you could really just break down, I, you know, you know, those dead spots of, you know, where I'm cooking beans and stuff like that. And you cut that out. We cut all that out. And then Connor could compile stuff in that, but he wasn't editing at the time, but I would do two, two and a half hours every day. And that was, for me was man, the highlight because I, I had to, you know, reading the chat window and making people laugh. And then I'd be saying, okay, what's your wife's name? And, and when's her birthday? And what is she like? You know, and oh, it's, it's, it's dildo girl rocking the world, you know, <laughs> yeah. making up songs and then adding beats and stuff to it. And that, that was and, one of the songs, right? Dildo girl. Dildo girl. Yeah. I send you, I'll send you a separate, a separate copy of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please. Um, 
it's funny. It was uh, uh, like three and a, three and a half minutes made up on the spot, and it's 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 pretty decent. Very Adam Sandler type of shit, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I enjoy that. I enjoy the the ad lib on the spot type and of that's stuff. Something you would want to do going forward in the channel, like more. You're without me doing your own stuff, whether it be cooking, talking on stream, yeah, um, all that kind of stuff. Is- yeah, yeah. Well, we did the one stream with you on Twitch there, where I got way too intoxicated with the Nicki Minaj thing, right? Oh, you had you had fun doing that. I had a blast. It was fantastic. It was a couple hours and and play. Yeah. I, I played a couple songs on acoustic guitar, and then we played same. Some people gave requests, and some of the the songs that uh, wouldn't. Um, we wouldn't do on the channel. Wouldn't do on the channel, and it was really fun that interaction. I I, I just watched one of yours this morning, um, uh, that from the Twitch stream that you had just posted up, and um, I never. That's another thing I didn't realize. Like we could just do a Twitch stream and then post that up, and either edit it or not edit it, right? Um, yeah, but- that's the, that's kind of like my plan at the moment is keep doing what I'm doing on main channel doing more things like this as well because like, I just like having conversations with people. I was a journalist for, uh, what, t- 10 plus years. So, you know, interviewing people and stuff is something that I'm very comfortable and familiar with. But like the type of content that I consume all the time, like I don't really consume that much reaction content, music reaction content anymore because it's like, you know, you're too, you're too into it and I don't want to start accidentally borrowing phrases or, or ideas from other people. So most of the stuff I'm watching is just like, podcast conversation like say comedy and a lot of football content as well because i'm completely obsessed and it's getting worse especially <laughs> uh through covid that was all i had all i had was, was man united which is a, a oh, sad shit. tale in itself but yeah. <laughs> um yeah with the streams what I, what I wanted to do now is on the second channel well um i wanted to do it on the main channel i wanted to stream on the main channel obviously people are going to be asking uh music uh you know they're going to be requesting music reactions so there's not going to be a situation where i can't be playing music or won't be playing music Unfortunately, with YouTube streaming, I don't know if you saw the tweet that I put out with the video, it kind of went mini viral um, about how if you stream on YouTube and you do music, it gets auto blocked after about 45 minutes by oh, that, bots. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. So it's just like, I, it's very frustrating. I've built up what, 382,000 subs or whatever it is over all these years, and I can't stream to them. You know, I can't stream to this audience that I built up. But I can, but. Uh, if I play music, then it yeah. gets automatically blocked. So taking it over to Twitch, and it is obviously a few less people are seeing it, but it's still been, they've been buzzing. And like I just like the idea of, yeah, reacting to some stuff that wouldn't go onto the channel, like you say, some things that wouldn't necessarily work as individual videos or wouldn't necessarily get the views as individual videos on the main channel. Yeah. But I want to show and, you know, show that I'm listening to more stuff and listening to the people that are asking me to listen to that stuff as well. But mm. also just stop sometimes and just chat, chat to the chat. Yeah. I want to do stuff where I'm on stream and then I'll, you know, I'll jump on a Zoom call or a Discord call with, you know, people like you guys or whoever it is. And you just have like a, a 20, 30 minute chat. I watched a fucking stream uh, a couple of days ago with Aiden Ross. And, you know, I mean, I assume you guys know Andrew Tate. He's absolutely everywhere right yes, now. Exactly. Yeah, 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 of course. And yeah. you know Aiden. You've talked to Aiden Ross. Yeah, I chat time. with him uh, just, through Instagram. Yeah, he he actually sent a message earlier on. He says it was very nice. He sent an Instagram message. He says, you know what? I I, I got watch your guys' relationship. He goes, you guys got something bottled. It was really nice. And he gave me some pointers. He also oh, said, beautiful. he said, you know, try to, he goes, first thing I want you to do, like he just said, you know, maybe start a second channel, get a second channel going and do different stuff on that channel. And I talked to Connor about it. I didn't know much about Aiden at the time. I didn't know who he was mm. either yeah. until he messaged us. But that's awesome. Yeah. But, but it was yeah, nice. I watched him reach out. Yeah, having this argument with Andrew Tate and another streamer XQC who I didn't even really know he was because ultimately as much as I try and pretend not to be I am a 40 year old guy from England so I don't know everything that young people know and it was totally <laughs> captivating I mean Andrew Tate's a very captivating individual anyways you can kind of watch him all day controversial mm-hmm. dude but um and I was like oh I want to do that you know that's like I love podcasts I've done podcasts before I did a gaming podcast that people love but it never really blew up and then we we stopped doing it after a while so yeah, that's a long, long, you know, I just want to do, you want to broaden out, don't you? Like I love doing music reactions and this whole thing has allowed me to discover a bunch of artists that I never would have and fall back in love with music in a similar way to you, Kevin, Yeah, uh, in a way that I was casually still listening to music as a 35 year old or whatever it was. And it was just stumbling across reaction videos, um, Lost in Vegas and a couple of other channels, Big Quint that, that started our journey on yeah. Rock Reacts. And um, yeah, but now because of that, like the the artists that I've been able to to listen to and now love and will want to go and see shows and have conversations with people who are much younger than me. But also I feel like I kind of like the idea of as a slightly older guy 
trying to insist or encourage people who are a little bit older than Colin and Al, who are going to move into a different part of their lives and have that thing that happened to both of us, where you have kids and uh, you grow up with jobs, life, and you just kind of lose touch of culture. Mm. And most people will then dismiss everything that is for the young people. They dismiss their social media apps, their video games, their music, and you become a dinosaur. And then I think ultimately then you turn right wing and you start hating foreign people and then you die. That seems to be the trajectory. <laughs> that seems to be the trajectory of British people. And I was like, I, don't, I cannot be that person. My mum, bless her, 65 years old, still listening to Radio 1 here in the UK, up to date with what music's coming out. Doesn't like a lot of it but still will go to gigs, concerts of newer artists. Oh, and yeah, I've always kind of been, yeah, I've always uh, wanted that, but like did definitely lose touch because it happens quick. I remember like 2012, 2013, my kid was like 18 months old. And I, I, and some, I was talking to someone about The Killers and I was like, oh yeah, The Killers, a new band. And it's like, no, no, dude, The Killers have been around for 10 years. They're not a new band, but that <laughs> happens when you get to that age. It's like yeah. two, year, two, two years and 10 years becomes the same thing. So I like the yeah. idea of encouraging people as they get, and our audiences will very soon get to that age to... To not fucking give up on, on and not be too dismissive of everything that's come before and still just just being aware of it. So that's another thing that, yeah, off on a tangent slightly, but uh, yeah, hearing your you story know, as well. I, with Through this uh, through this whole process here, I have, uh, I was, you know, I, I wasn't in touch with the culture and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, just the... Just everything about the culture and music and Connor's age and, and I missed it all. Like I was, mm. I was literally... I was working and like, I didn't know and that's what we, and I got to go back to when you were talking earlier, which is my thought is that when you were, I was working such long hours and I didn't know what you were listening to. And, and I look back at that and I feel like a shit because I didn't, I was so encapsulated in work and so obsessed with work and you know what I mean? And mortgage and this and this and that, that I don't think I ever took the moment to really sit down and go, what are you listening to? Like, I didn't do that. Did I? I didn't, no, no you- I didn't. So I apologize for that. And that's why Cuddy's your father. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So Cuddy taught you everything. Cause I was just away. I was, a, I was away at the time and, 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 and that that's happens. Like John just says that that happens. I, I, I lost touch with things and it's not your fault. It's no, just, it's just life. Uh, life yeah. happened. I, you know, car payments and mortgage and working hours, mum working, you know, crazy hours just to get things paid. Right. And to, and to have a life. Right. Yeah. So, for us, really, for the kid, for me and my sister. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it was it was a long time. So for now, you know, the way we've sort of come together at this point, I think this is the right point, though. Like I, I keep coming back to that intersection. Is that it's the right time? It's the right time for both of us to come together. Exactly I was, that. Yeah, no, it's just it is. It's, it is. It's, it, I mean, it's the right time because it, it's the right time because it's the right time because it's the only time it happened. But it is clearly the right time because if yeah, you yeah, come yeah. to it when you are my age. Then Connor would have been way too young, and there's yeah. YouTube. But yeah, it's it, it's and, and obviously waited, if we waited another five years, I might have kids, and and he would be a little older, and you would be less open minded. Yeah, like it was the perfect. But also the story you told at the beginning about you know your health issues and how you know who knows how different everything would be if you you know not found something so wonderful that you've managed to achieve as well. So it's just it's a beautiful story, guys. It really is, and I'm so pleased for for all your success, and uh, you know I love watching the videos. And yeah, just just buzzing for you, really, and and whatever's coming next. So I'm going to ask you guys one question. It's it's like a similar question, but it's a separate question as well. So whether we do this, we're going back and forth, or or you, you do one each and the other each. I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out on the fly. But I want to know Kevin's three favorite records, if you can list them or name them that you've done. But also Connor, your mm-hmm. three favorite, if you can think of them off the top of your head moments that you've had showing your dad this music so i think maybe we start with kevin and your your yeah, three no, favorite records time to think yes <laughs> well no, you, you know you know i i i i had an idea that we're going to be talking about either the the the, the lists or or what you know what i mean because it's it's i knew this sort of was coming up so uh i did think about it um and these are and 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 these are the reasons i'll have reasons behind these three albums um, and we've listened to Connor has given me like the creme of a, the creme. You know what I mean? Like these have been great albums. You haven't really, you, other than the I'm sorry, Playboy Part Two Party people, but the, Playboy Party, <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. But that one, I just the Christmas one just didn't do it for me at all. Right? Um, if I have to start with number three, it's going to be um, uh, to Pimp a Butterfly. Reason being is it was the first hip hop album um, I listened to, and musically, lyrically, and the flow and cadence was just absolutely brilliant and pure artistry i tell you it was 
it introduced me to it and i was i was right away i was like fuck this is it like wow i did not know this existed i thought mm-hmm. it was just a couple 808s <laughs> yo mama you know the, whatever right <laughs> he just opened no he you know what i mean he just opened my mind mm-hmm. like it was it was something else right um and it just it really opened things cuz that i was li- i was really leery about cuz we were doing in rainbows and we we're doing you know, we were yeah. into Radiohead and we we're listening to that. And then um to Pimple Butterfly. And and now going through his, his um his discography, uh Kendrick has just blown me away. This morning we were listening to him again, and I was just like, Man, th- there was it was the one song um which did we listen to? Because I didn't know the heart series, I didn't understand that before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the heart part five, but we went back and you really, showed, I showed you the heart part four. Showed me the heart and then part. we listened to Father Time again. Yeah, and it was just like, man, it's just he's at another uh, another level. Like it's and anyways, that's that's okay. And my number two album, and I have it here, is um Mac Miller Circles. And mm-hmm. I and I, a reason behind this is that you know, I talked to you earlier about I grew up in a really, really tough neighborhood. Uh, youngest of six brothers, uh, single, you know, single, my dad was working, right. Not making a lot of my my money. My mom stayed home. Um, a lot of the friends in our area were mental health issues, but also got into, you know, crack cocaine and and heroin and stuff. And we lost quite a few people, you know, to, to drugs. Um, I resonated really, really closely with this album and, and it gave me, it gave me a couple of things. It gave me sadness. Um, but it gave me hope because, uh, the hope coming from like from me learning to that you know not to overindulge in things in life right and just really be in the moment and love these guys for the family and don't go drinking too much and doing these things you know and I, I've been a good boy in the last couple of years I think right and I've been yeah even I'd say the last little you know chunk of time you've you haven't had any alcohol or anything yeah like no that. I just like it's, it's not like, not a you know what I mean it's not like I, I was getting whacked out and drinking for five days I mean I, I was having like you know the tall boys and you're drinking mm-hmm. them you know, noon and, and that kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And getting a good buzz and then, and, you know, having a hangover in the morning, stuff like that. So I wanted to quell that, but that album sort of re- realizing that so many other people go through these, these issues. Um, it just really gave me a little, you know, pulled me back and said, you know what, like slow down. That's like when I listened to reborn off uh kids see ghosts it, that I can't tell you how that gave me that, that song. And I'm just going all over the place, but that song really gave me a boost lyrically at the time i needed it again because it was like i i felt like i didn't know where i was going in life at all mm-hmm. i was lost and everything felt like shit my body felt like shit uh everything i had the family which was great but you don't you don't really inca- grab that at the time you don't think and go this okay. is the real special part it's like my body's fucked i'm not doing anything in life and you're I'm not, not you're not you're not in your yourself in those moments i, I have some no some I wasn't. health issues as well and when you're in those yeah. moments when you you're it's almost impossible to to kind of see beyond your own prison really that you're, you're yeah in, you get it you, when you're you, in pain yeah, you and, really, and suffering you do. yeah and the, and the people you bark at are the closest ones to you which is yeah. You, know, you, you sort of bark at them. So Reborn was a, a, a big one for me. But Mac that, that, and then- that song as well. So to, to almost the exact same thing when I first heard that song. I was very yeah. mentally unwell when Ye came out, which was the week before. Yeah, mm-hmm. into music, not really sleeping. Like I have a lot of health issues. I'll go into them another time. But um, hearing that song on Kids See Ghost and realizing how my life was changing as this, I think we, we as we're hitting a hundred thousand subscribers and everything was changing in terms of like been trying to do this thing for years and that song at the time as my health started to improve slightly towards the end of that month and continue to improve was was it was it i mean i almost can't listen to it because every time i do i just break down every oh, single so, time man. yeah you know we are so on the thing like just you saying that just now gave me shivers because when i listened to that and that was the exact same moment for me it was like when Connor, we're sitting at the table at that time, yeah, right? we had a different setup. We had a different setup. Mm. I remember hearing it. And, I'm so I'm so reborn, uh, and I just get keep moving forward. Yeah. And then I just was like that resonated with me so much. Just to to me keep. Too. There's something about the frequencies because it's quite an on the nose song lyrically, isn't it? I mean, like yes. it's very clear what it is about. Like it's yeah. not there's not a lot of subtlety to it, but there's something about it. And I was saying this when I was just doing. I mean, I did Kid Cuddy's a kid named Cuddy for the first time yesterday that's the the previous video that will be on this channel and yeah just there's something that he taps into some frequency some some plane that i don't quite understand 
yeah. that he can connect with people in a way that because it's not <laughs> it's not deep lyrically like some of his lyrics are good oh. but most of it is pretty straightforward especially yeah. on that older stuff there but even on, on, on Reborn as well it's obviously much later there's something else going on there that I can't figure yeah. out and somebody who had really good music theory might be able to say exactly why and it probably is something to do with that but I don't think that even if it is that that was deliberate from him as an artist when he started I don't think he has that level of musicality with all the music theory to tap natural. into it I just, just think it's, about, just, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a deep sort of almost spiritual authenticity to that music that that you just connect to and I, I mean I heard like self-energy is contagious is something that 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 I've heard recently from my therapist actually which is something I really um, you know, I really responded to, and she said that when you, you when you see authenticity in the world, whether it's from somebody speaking or something else, you it's so you're just completely drawn in. And oh, that! You, oh, yeah. I feel that for it. You don't, yeah, yeah. And that no. that song at the moment, especially with Kanye as well, who was going through mental hell at the time as, as well, and just ah, uh, even though I don't think they were they were fixed either when they were still kind of in the midst of the shit in that song yeah. in that recording for me. But it was like, okay, we're, we're even though we've got all this stuff to still deal with, we are we're through the other side. We, we can we can see the light almost. We can yeah. see the lights and move forward. And yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's mad that you brought that one up. Could you before you get into the last one? Have you felt about being emotional on camera? It's quite you know, as men, we're taught, especially you know, a certain generation. I say you'd be a bit older than me, but I'm much closer in your age to your age than I am to Connor's. You mm. know, being emotional. Um, showing your feelings, obviously, look down upon. You know, you don't. You just didn't really do it. Um, I think more so for a generation older than ours. But um, the first time I shed a tear on camera, I couldn't help it when it happened. Like it just yep. uh, a song just broke happened. me in the moment. Um, I had a couple of little moments on Rock Reacts, but it was one that I was doing on my own. An Isaiah Rashad song. I won't spoil it in case you go on to do the record, but. Um, yeah, how did you feel? Because I was really reluctant. I was editing it myself, and I was like, "Am I really going to put this out? Like the amount that I used to get bullied at school and all this sort of stuff. Am I really going to put this out?" I was like, "You know, just fuck it, just put it out." And the response was, has always been incredible. Mm. Um, and yeah, I actually put that out as its own clip um, the other day again because a lot of people asked me to do it, and I said, "What bits from my like reaction history should I put out as their own video on a second channel?" Loads of people said this, and so I watched it back again. It was so hard to watch. Because the moment that I was in when I did that was was really difficult. But I'm proud of myself for putting it out there because of the response. Clearly, people um, got a lot out of seeing that. And I think it was good for me to just, just, I think just so be like, too, okay, yeah. with putting that out there. Do you know what I mean? And not not continuing to hold everything in. So, yeah. How do you, yeah, I mean, yeah, is for, it similar? Well, for me, it was, a, it was the first one, I think, we believe it was, I believe it was my AirPods, sorry. at 808s, right? right. Yeah, well, you did, you did shed a tear, but it was more of... Uh, kind of just a, a wow moment on late registration with diamonds from Sierra Leone. Yeah, that was that like you, one. You, yeah. you were teary eyed, but it was more of like a just wow. That was musically amazing. Everything for that song came together for me, like the story, because I know uh, what what happened, the atrocities in Sierra Leone, and then the diamonds part, and the way that Jay Z came the, the together. Sample then uh, that what that was when I was like, when music happens, that and all those things combined, man. It it worked, it worked perfectly, and I and that and I cry all the time at concerts, John. I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to be the guy to fucking hide that. When something hits and it's going, and and then that mm. music is there, I got the shivery wivers. My <laughs> eyes start to go. I get the chicken skin or whatever you call it over in the UK, uh, bubbly. What do you, what do you call it over there? Where you get the goosebumps? 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 Yeah, goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah chicken, what do they call chicken skin bubbly wobbly. That's what it's called now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at the end of 808, uh, it's Cinderella story. Pinocchio. Pinocchio story. I always fuck that up. Um, I I was listening to that. We had a lot. We just lost somebody very close in our life a few days before. Um, Kanye is singing. Nobody's listening. He's pouring out his heart in that. It was the bad recording from, I think, from the Orient, right? Yeah, it was uh, somewhere in Japan. It yeah, was, Japan uh, or Taiwan or something. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was like, I was just, I, I just started to well up because I'm like, he is letting out his heart and they're missing what they're is screaming and cheering, screaming and cheering. And they're, they just don't get, get, there's magic happening right now. This is coming out of him, out of flow. And from a person who likes to flow my feelings ad out ad lib and let it just come out, this guy is just creating magic lyrically coming out and it's coming out and you're missing it. And it was just it, listening. And it just the, the combination of losing someone close to us and then someone missing magic. It was something happened and I just broke down and started crying. And it was just 
And then, then I said to Connor, I said, we got to edit that out. You know what I mean? Because I just looked like a gray-haired, sobbing freak, right? And uh, Connor decided, you know what? We need to show it because that's what you felt. Yeah, you can't. And I'm like, I don't want to see people mm. like a 50 guy <laughs> crying, right? But um, Connor kept it in and people seemed like, just like you, seemed to resonate that it was like, it probably, I don't know how many other people cried to that song, but for me, it it hit the mark that hit all those things with life happening and the lyrics and 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 summarizing and ending that album too. Mm-hmm. You I know, think, yeah, I think because the album has this, this sad tone and there's a lot yeah. of uh, yeah emotions throughout the whole record, and then just that song to finish it off. It's kind of like the yeah, and it's a bad. And I heard that Beyonce said you have to put it on. She was the one that made him put it on put the it end. On the yeah. Record, yeah, yeah, put it on the end of the album. So um, that was the other time. And but otherwise, I don't. I don't, I, I, if it, if it's going to move me, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Like I, it's funny. Cause John, I'm the youngest of six boys, right? My brother's generation, um, my brother Colin and Bob, they grew up in the, in the times where the guys, you didn't show emotion, mm. especially where we're from here. Like you didn't show emotion. It was like, the guys didn't go, you know, they didn't ever said they loved you. They never give you a pat on the back or any of that kind of stuff. It was just, it was whatever my generation we started going, hey, man, love you. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, yeah. just that simple thing. That, hey, love you, dude, man. See you tomorrow. Or a hug on the back or a high five and that. And that's when I saw the change. When I saw that change where guys started to show emotion. And then and then uh, that's for when I was going through my my mental health issues. And I have a, a, my best friend who's literally saved my life, man. I love you, Brian. You're out there. Um, he he hung out with me during all this time and and drove me places and took me to the beach and we chatted and 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 he's just my best friend he got you know the guy that you you you, think, you, you, you don't need a ton uh, of friends you, you think need he'd still be here if if you didn't have Brian I would still be here but I don't know what capacity I don't know I was I didn't even know what was going on and, and mental health at that time my doc I went to go see my doctor about it and I said I don't feel like I'm on planet Earth I I don't feel here I feel disjointed from reality and all that kind of stuff and he's like, just, they're just like oh, okay well, it was nothing yeah I didn't get any pill he just like you know you got to slow down and do all this kind of stuff. and it didn't work it just I went through years and years and and, and if we're gonna get deep into this I lost a lot of shit I'll tell you I'll be honest like I lost my during this I lost my musical career because I was at high points and then I had you know interest from from labels you know small local labels and and trying to work my way up the ladder and i was playing shows and that and then anxiety would just fucking literally beat the shit out of me and i'd be in a in a sleeping bag for like a month you know just Mm, in in, in, in a dark room just trying to figure out reading books and trying to figure out where that was and then and it was it was a tough uh it was it was a tough go but um i forgot now i lost my train of thought completely well we're going to the third final album oh the third final album yeah sorry i was on that um Third final album is, there's, and there's, I got reasons behind this, is the College Dropout. Mm-hmm. College Dropout for me was uh, a story of persistence, um, never giving up, kicking ass, believing in yourself, singing that through the wire, mm-hmm. um, going, and, and, and now, now, you know, I even have better, more feelings after watching the the documentary, he, the documentary and seeing him go into things mm-hmm. and that this really gave me a killer instinct to, you know what, every fucking day I'm going to do my best. It's if I'm doing push-ups or if I'm going out with Connor or we're doing things is that give it your all, all the time. And that's what Kanye taught me. Like I, I, I didn't know a lot when we did uh, the first Kanye album about him other than certain things, the bad things in the news, but I've really come to to respect him. And I, and then I realized he was going through some um, bipolar stuff, uh, mental health in the, on the yay album. I really connected with, right. Mm. Um, the song fathers with the daughters in there was that uh, violent crimes, violent crimes. Mm. And um, I just hide. I, I just, I, I connected it to, to Kanye. I love his funny little bits that he puts in there. But he's also talking about his serious things. But he also throws something in that's a comedic comedic thing that makes you realize he's you know he's down to earth and all that kind of thing, right? He's um, a human. He's a human, yeah. And um, and then getting on fly, finally getting onto Rockefeller Records and getting signed after doing doing all that work and the documentary really played a part in also making that 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 my favorite album. And there's I tell you, there's a lot of albums on here, man. Like uh, number if I if I had to go to number my I was have here is like uh. In Rainbows was another one I've never mm-hmm. heard, and then and In Rainbows is absolutely brilliant, 
And if I have to, I'm going to throw in one more. I'm just going to throw in one. Oh, as many as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, it's because I only heard um, Get Lucky off this album. And mm. when I heard uh, Random Access Memories for the first time, people have said, you haven't heard it. You haven't heard it. No, I haven't heard it. And then I heard Get Lucky. I played Luck, Get Lucky a million times on Spotify. Just a song, you know, mm. right? I played that and danced to it. But when we got into Giorgio Moroder and I found the background, I found out what he did in terms of like Donna Summer and and mm. that that the one song where he talks about and the synthesizer. The yeah, I love that song. Uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Omar Hakim. Yeah, Omar Hakim is one of the greatest of all time. Sting. He, I mean, he has he's played with everybody. He's been one of my heroes. As soon as I found out, when I, and he's playing those beats, and I'm just like ready to pee my pants. There's <laughs> synths coming in. Then I got really embarrassed because I was like. I did not know anything about Daft Punk until the comments started coming in and and then Connor was speaking to me about how how brilliant they were and then they actually retired and I was like fuck I missed all this stuff but then I just shot myself and I said forget it you know what I mean you missed it right you didn't listen to it but and I've heard it now and I've heard it now and I'm mm-hmm. going to I'm going to go listen to Discovery and I don't know if we're going to do Discovery on the well, album, well, yeah for sure but a point you said earlier John about listening to other reaction channels and you didn't want to pull phrases and stuff like that. One thing I didn't point on is that I really tried to shy away from specific music because I didn't want to pick up melodies because I was songwriting. So I I didn't want to, there was a lot of stuff I really wanted to shy away from and just sort of not listen to radio as much. I even said to my drummer, I says, I stay, I'm going to stay away from the radio as much as I can. Cause what I, what I want to come up with, I don't want it to, I don't want to be influenced by anybody else. Mm. I want to come up by myself. Right. Looking back now, I realized that by listening to all this music, and and if I would have done this earlier, I would have been able to come out and have different influences and different styles and different tempos and and textures and elements and, and stuff like that. Still have your own, and still have my own. But I shied away from it, saying, you know what, I I gonna I it's gonna influence me, and I'm gonna sound like this band or this band or that. But now I look back, and then all these artists that we've spoke about and you've you've reacted to at some point have have listened to music and they've yeah. pulled little elements you know um like coldplay with the okay computer right yeah the it, coldplay was heavily influenced by radiohead and yeah. and uh you know especially on their early records same with muse um but you know they built careers off that and then they eventually cha- like viva la vida sounds nothing like radiohead yeah um, yeah yeah so it's like the coldplay eventually you know, changed. And and I think a lot of artists do that where they'll, their earlier work will be heavily influenced by, you know, who they're listening to Yeah. until they start to find their own sound. And then they start to experiment and, and they get to a level where they're, uh, they're doing their own thing and you don't even really hear the influence. Well, you, you know, me, when I'm going to write a song right now, I could grab my acoustic right now and start playing something. And what would it sound like the first thing? Probably like Radiohead, right? No, no, no. Like my like early. You can't, like you Ryan. can't, you can't tease that and not do it. What? <laughs> no. You can't tease that you're going to pick up the acoustic and then not go and pick okay, up right, the acoustic. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking right. <laughs> Why don't you finish your your oh, sorry, thing about the, yeah. the last? Yeah, yeah. All right, fair. Yeah, I uh, know Brian Adams. Okay, no, no, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I, I listened to Brian Adams when he was growing, he, Vancouver based, yeah. right? You know, Brian Adams, over sixty nine. The Run to You was the, the the that that album there. Run to You was just huge, right? It was the mm. biggest. And uh, I would go outside and with that fake guitar, and I would sit there in the rain, right? Because he he filmed the video to summer '69, very close to us, not very far away. And I'd stand there in the rain, like a little moron, right? I'd go yeah. out there, sitting there pouring rain. And I'd do the and I'd mm. do that, right? And um, so everything I wrote after that was D G C based. It was the same one four five progression, you know. Maybe put an A minor in for a for a for a bridge and that kind of stuff, right? So um, I was really stuck on that. But if I would have been listening to more, you know, bringing in Roxy music or, you know, the psychedelic furs and really, mm. really listening to their albums, I might have changed a little bit and morphed yeah. into it. And I, and I think that that came full circle to where Connor, when I was introducing him to music, he was yawning and, you know, and he, he you know, <laughs> no, really, right? Because it yeah. was like, and he, and I, and I, that's what I was listening to. And, and I, and I'm not, you know, I look back and I parts of me feel bad, but it was like I had at least I had music in the house. Do you true, know what I mean? True. There yeah. was music, there was music in the house. There was just mm. we had a small studio, we had drums, we had we had instruments around. But I did make the mistake with him and his daughter, because uh, his his daughter. Wow. My, my sister. Massive exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> his sister. I, and I pushed them to play. Go down there, play ACDC, mm. Back in Black. And they'd go play it and they'd play it really good and I'd videotape it. And, and then we'd and, get bored. And then they'd get bored. And then I was like, 
oh my God, you know what? Maybe I should just leave the instruments and not push them into it. It's like, you know, you're with your son or somebody with soccer, you know, you got to go, go do your footy, go do your, yeah. right? Just but let this them. This is exactly, them, yeah. You know? With that, with that sport, in fact, like he is, you know, football, huge thing for me. Um, you know, Manchester United, like I said, my family's from there. So like passed from grandmother to mother to me, like long history with it. And I want my boys obviously to, to love the team and all this sort of stuff rough right now because they're not what they were. But yeah, from age like four to 10, not really interested, didn't really yeah. enjoy playing. He had a problem with his hip when he was very young, had to have an operation. So it kind of hurt him to play it. And it got to the point where it's like, I can't keep pushing this. Um, also, him sitting with me watching the game, he didn't like the 90 minutes where I was not his dad and was some yeah. very stressed dickhead <laughs> watching sports. So that's understandable. But um, yeah, in terms of like pushing your own kids into what you love or trying to, um, not that you're living vicariously through them, but you just go, well, this stuff's fucking amazing. You should learn about all this stuff yeah. that's fucking amazing too. And yeah. it's like, well, actually, no, they need to, you know, as you've I've seen with Connor, I'm sure they need to find all their own shit and it needs to be pure from them as well. And then mm -hmm. probably they'll come back, you know, that's I'm exactly. sure Elliot, Elliot's my oldest, he'll probably come back to some of the stuff that I've shown him, whether it's also video games as well. So like I say, I worked in that industry for, for a long time and obviously kids love games so there's certain like classic games over the years like truly artful ones that i want him to know and he doesn't care about any of that shit he just wants to play Fortnite and roblox with his mates and minecraft and i'm like yeah, yeah. maybe he'll come back to it in time if, well, if i force it he's just going to reject it even more i think so yeah it's interesting that that, that you say that and then i also think if you like yeah you, you you talk about oh i should have done this or maybe i should have listened to this but anything that you've done differently and i don't know if this is your belief system but it is mine you wouldn't be here right now having this success right now because everything else would have changed. You know, you'd, you'd listen to a couple of different albums, maybe your music career had done something different, and then yeah, but no, you know. yeah. And if I yeah. listen to all, I lift, if I listen to all this stuff that we li we wouldn't have anything to listen to. That's yeah, exactly, true. exactly. <laughs> yeah. It would be yeah. nothing. Right? We'd be like, what are we going to listen to? I don't know. We'd have no channel. Mm. Yeah, there'd be no channel. So, so yeah. it, I, I do believe in that. It's, it's it happened for a reason, and and uh, and it's. Just to, we're you know wait I think things come around for reasons I don't know why but I don't know what causes them but so so do you want me to answer my three questions before you get the guitar to show off your your little guitar skills I'm not going to show off the guitar skills I'm just going to just show the chord progressions of what I usually write in right mm. yeah but need a little bit like you like say you can't tease these things and then not give the people at least a, a little exactly. taste yeah you, yeah, you've, yeah. Teased it, so you've got to show it so you want to do your thing yeah, yeah I can answer my questions okay, cool. um mine was uh my the top three moments right yeah or at least some standout moments it could be top three or, or just anything that released you spoke to you or touched you yeah, so so for me, uh, I've, yeah, I, I thought of three uh, while we were chatting. While you were chatting there, um, number one, probably uh, the diamonds from Sierra Leone moment where you were blown away. Um, just because that was when I really, I mean, I know you were blown away by by the Kendrick album and by you liked the Cuddy record that we did and you liked the college dropout but when we finally got to late registration you've had a f you had a few hip hop albums you know under my belt under your belt um but when we got to that song and and you were so blown away um that's when i kind of knew like okay you're you're in this you 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 are in this genre you like this genre you're not just saying this to to please me or please the viewers no, you're not yeah. lying about anything like you really actually enjoy this so that that is one moment um another moment uh probably one of the more recent ones uh with auntie diaries from kendrick uh where you got very emotional about that uh about that song yeah um it was it was tough to to watch your reaction just because of how uh you know it was a, it was a painful song for you to listen to yeah. i think right yeah and uh but i think it was something that kind of was eye opening for me and and seeing you in a vulnerable state is not something that you know as a son you you don't see your father your father's usually you know like we were talking about earlier like you you know you don't cry you don't you know yeah. you're just tough you get work through everything and to see you in this vulnerable state um it's uh it's like i don't know how to explain it but it's humanizing how did you, how did you feel though like was it weird for you to no no it was not weird at all but it it, it really made it put it in perspective like okay you know I, you're my dad 
but you can get emotional the same way I get emotional. You know, I'm not, yeah. uh, you're not this guy that's just, you know, tough and can yeah, get, yeah. get through every, like, you know, you, you were able to express your emotions and it was, uh, it was something very impactful for me to see. And then my, my third uh, moment, I, I, there's a lot I could, I could list for hours, but I'll just stick to three um, was just that the first time you heard Mac Miller uh, come back to earth uh, when that yeah. song started and you were yeah. like, wow, this is Mac Miller. Um, Cause you knew nothing about him and he had such a big impact in my life. And, yeah. and to hear you, be blown away just by that first intro track was uh was a special moment for me because you know it's it it is uh you know i get nervous when i'm showing you a record that i love because mm. you know it's uh if you don't like it i'm not going to get offended but it is like oh that sucks because i you yeah know, i really connect with this so when you really connected with swimming i was like that's great because that's one of my favorite albums and uh, yeah and it's great that we can we've drove around together in the car blasting swimming together yeah, yeah. and uh we always listen to it and uh, i think that's it's beautiful yeah i know that that's great see you know what's awesome about this john you had you just you just did a great question that i wouldn't even have thought of right like that like said like i said at the beginning professional professional kevin you you, you are totally man you're totally you, this is your show this is because i would have never touched and asked that question and i just got emotional because i didn't realize that hearing that back from Connor was fucking pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you know, those moments that I don't realize them. I just, they just well, happen we, we for do me. Them, we yeah. do an episode every week. So we kind of forget, you yeah. know, you, you get in this, this groove of just constantly doing stuff and, and we have these moments, but then you move on to the next album and then you mm. already forget about, um, you know, what happened that week. Yeah. yeah. And um, what's mad too is um, the audience will have, you know, especially if they watch some of the videos multiple times, which they do, Mm -hmm. um they'll have their own moments which really spoke to them and then you know they might mention them to you and you're like uh yeah i have no memory of that whatsoever <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get that with someone you know reacted to I, I i need to count them up but it's hundreds of albums and then you know songs now over the years and a lot of them i've listened to once like because realistically when you're doing as much content as i've been doing there's absolutely no way that you could Go Do back more. and spend a lot of time with all of these albums. And some of them, yep. even though I enjoy them in the moment, like I'm not necessarily interested in going to listen to them again, especially after you've finished doing an album reaction because it's quite mentally taxing to do. And yeah, so people are like, well, you said this about this song or you said this. And I'm like, I'm sure I did, man. But like the, the, what I I'm doing remember. is fucking <laughs> yeah. insane. Like, yeah. I'm just sitting in this fucking oven, constantly trying to say the most intelligent thing I can possibly think of about music. And then, yeah, just making it up <laughs> most of the time. But yeah. <laughs> that's what it is but yeah it's interesting that, yeah I, I was glad that then uh yeah I, I asked such an amazing question but like i said what, you know what that I, was that was yeah. a very good question yes that thanks is, that, yeah. that, that is what i aim to do well i mean i've you guys have been ridiculously generous with your time two hours um uh, i'm gonna title this an amazing con i was gonna it was just gonna be a conversation with turning the tables but now it's gonna be an amazing conversation with turning the tables because <laughs> i think people are gonna I love this video and i absolutely loved it but we cannot let you guys go Without without the guitar, like yeah, it has yeah, to happen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It we, I, I've got to grab the guitar and pee at the same time. Not at the same time, but I got to. Mm, okay, don't know go. if we need that bit on camera, but yeah, you yeah. You, you go. <laughs> you, yeah, take, you go take, ahead. Take, yeah, take the camera with you. Just pick it up and go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Here we no go. Fur. Is that too much verb? Oh yeah, maybe wow. go back. Shit, we were in Wembley then. This song I wrote, yeah, it sounds like in Wembley. This song I wrote many years ago, and I was getting frustrated with somebody in my life. And I was just gonna get away. Turning around on a piece of ground that just won't stay in its place. Everything I own's in a lost and found that just can't be replaced. Do what you want and say what you will Try and put me down I got a couple of real good friends That can always bring me around What do you want from me? I ain't no millionaire Go and get your dollar's worth Just don't seem to care You and him and all of them 
them don't understand my ways That's why I'm leaving today I'm leaving today I'm moving around like a hurricane So fast you can't catch my neck Some say I'm like a falling star Or a book left out in the rain Do what you want and say what you will Try and put me down I got a couple of real good friends That can always bring me around What do you want from me? I ain't no millionaire As long as you get your dollar's worth You just don't seem to care You and him and all of them Don't understand my ways That's why I'm leaving today I'm leaving today So do what you want Say what you want Don't try to run my life I got some great ideas But I know I'm not right So stay with me tonight I'm moving around like a hurricane So fast you can't catch my name Some say I'm like a falling star Or a book left out in the rain Do what you want and say what you will Try and put me down I got a couple of real good friends That can always bring me around What do you want from me? Let's fucking go! <laughs> yes! Oh cold. my god! Yeah, you killed that. I was a bit out of tune in spots, but that's oh, an old. Man. Yeah, that was amazing. That was a song I wrote. Uh, uh, How many years ago? So uh, twenty years ago, never released it. But the breakdown part where it's it's so you can do that. <laughs> yeah. That's how it went. Unbelievable. Right. This is now like going to be top three videos ever on my channel. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Unbelievable. Um, I'm absolutely buzzing. Hopefully, we can do more in the future as well. But yeah, oh, fucking okay. fantastic. And I'm so happy for your success and continued success. And yeah, I mean, everybody knows already turning the tables. But if you don't, there's a link in the description to their channel. I'm almost feel embarrassed saying it, but go and subscribe if you haven't yet. They're blowing up. They're one of the most viral channels on all of YouTube, but you know, you already knew that shit. I don't need to tell you that shit. All right. You know, I'm John. I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Peace.